Hello, 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 hello. Right, one second because you're not going to see anything just yet. I'm going to swap over to this just for a moment. Right, so let me just adjust this. I might have to do a little bit of adjustment in a second uh, to get the, the show. But first of all, so tonight we're going to do a uh, editor stream. Now, I've only downloaded it over the weekend. Root building, um, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon because it needs a little bit of um, looking into. Uh, it's not so plain and simple compared to Trains in Classic where you can just go into the build menu, plonk a name down, pick a template and off you pop really. It's a lot more in depth for this. Uh, I've got documentation. Uh, this isn't public, by the way. This is obviously through our stuff through JT. So I'm, I'm going to have a little cycle through it and see if I can figure out how to set up a basic route to do some um, stuff like that. However, I can go into a route and show you how to play scenery and stuff. So at some point, I'll probably do a bit of that. But I would like to, at some point, um, have a little bit of a basic test route uh, and basically just show you sort of how you can do things in time. It's not going to be a, an overnight job, unfortunately. I, I, and I knew it wouldn't be that easy. But uh, yeah, setting up a, a route is not so plain and simple. But we can do some scenario stuff. However, however, we can't do everything. Because I've only learned in the last half hour that we can't do certain things to make scenarios. <laughs> um, we can't do the objectives, apparently. Um, Rob Powell dropped me a message about 5 to 8 and said there's something that we can't do, which is putting the objectives in. But will be able to still do some stuff so we'll still have a decent enough evening ryan thank you very much for the um resub there it's not popped up because i'm on my other source at the minute for youtubing but i've seen it so thank you very much for the resub there that was the dj app um yeah so we'll, we'll do what we can do tonight and whatever we can't do we'll come back to uh, and finish off so we can at least do stuff it's not going to be a pointless stream um <laughs> play alienware you can always blame Alienware for something. Very night. Good evening, Adam Egg as well, and Ryan. Good evening, uh, Lal Rat. Good evening. What else have we got? Aaron Thomas and Rambo, JP and Chief Jack. Good evening. Ben Yates. Good evening. Uh, good evening, to Keith as well, and Lewis Hopton, and whoever else is there. Right. So first of all, if you want to do editing. Um, yes, I'm going to put this onto YouTube. So basically, um, this will be going onto YouTube. I'm going to download it off Twitch and I'm going to re-upload it. A bit like I've done with videos in the past. So I'm going to download all these and I'm going to put them on there. Um, because they'll only sit down here for so long. So you will be able to find this on our YouTube channel at some point in the week. Probably maybe tomorrow or Tuesday. I'll get it up there so you can be able to have a watch through. Um, I mean, anyone watching this on YouTube now, even though you're not... Um, Please bear in mind that there's obviously a chat going on with um, me and Twitch viewers, but you'll be at least be able to watch stuff, so that's that caveat. Uh, anyway, as we are, we're on Twitch, so... Will I do a root building stream? I will do, as I just said literally about two minutes ago, at some point I'll be able to do it properly. Uh, I need to learn how to set up a route. It's not easy. A lot of stuff needs to be done, so it's not going to be a, a next week job. But I can go into routes and put scenery down, so I can at least show you that, uh, which I might be able to do in a bit if we end up getting into a bit of a, a buffer stop where we can't do certain things with this scenario stuff. So we'll just go with it and do what's what and see what we can do. Uh, right, so um, what you see before you at the minute, this is the Epic Store. So to do this, you need to download the editor. So you need that, uh, obviously an Epic Games account. If you don't, obviously go make one. If you bought Trains of World 4 through this, then you've already got one. Uh, if you've got it on Steam, it doesn't matter. If you're running on Steam, which I am, basically what this does, once you've downloaded the editor, it'll look for Trains of World 4. There must be something in the background where it looks to make sure you've downloaded Trains of World 4, because if you haven't, you can't open this. It won't let you open it, and it'll tell you. It'll come up with an issue, as far as I'm aware. It told me an issue, really, because I was on... Uh, Basically, I was on dev build at one point. I thought I'd try and open it to see what happens. It wouldn't let me. So that was this afternoon before I swapped back over. Evening, George. How are we doing? And Prof. Good evening. And Yubika. Good evening. So simple as literally just go to the Steam. Uh, not Steam. Fuck Steam. Uh, edit Epic Store. Literally type in Train Sim World Four. 
literally at the top to click that it'll be up this page kev good evening thank you very much for the resub it hasn't popped up because i'm on a different source it'll swap back over soon and everyone else will, if anyone sends anything it'll come through in person good evening amarillium how are we <clears throat> you're in chats uh oh the charity stream for matt i popped in last night as he was finishing <laughs> but uh no thank you for popping in as well um excellent excellent so yeah literally download it it'll pop in library i think you can launch it through here anyway but i just launched it off the desktop so uh apparently it's 80 gigabyte although it didn't take that long to download so i don't know um if it does something once it's downloaded george thank you for the bits as well there's apparently a hype train you that's helpful so that's that anyway so yeah make sure you got train to 4 before downloading that because it won't work so here's my editor so we're gonna open this up it literally opens up exactly the same as um Basically, one we use at JT, which is that that one's made for JT there. So it opens up the exact same. It's a bit quicker though um, on this, so it actually loads up a lot quicker because everything's all cooked. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to swap back over, not that one, this one, and I'm going to have. Uh, where is it? I've got a. Oh, it's done it. It's picked it up. There we go. Sorted. Right, we're back on normal uh, scene. Hey! Elf, fire! We've got the hype train. I'm Team Razor. I'm Team Razor. I was just—I uh, saw your comment before, Ryan. So I mean, it's still Team TSC, which is totally understandable. I mean, I, I'm still a happy TSC. -er. Um, I'm a lot more sold on TSW4 since all the new stuff and the editor. I mean, I, I, I'm getting more TSW4 anyway because I'm, I'm involved with it every day. So my interest gets a lot further to that because I don't spend nowhere near as much time on TSC. I've spent about three hours in the last two weeks on TSC. Sort of, I mean, I've been on holiday, but it is what it is. Um, someone also said something about a level 100. Uh, going for a level 100 in TSW next stream. Ooh, maybe. I don't think it'll be far off. I'm level 95, maybe nearly 96 already, so. It's literally, um, it's getting there. So, at the minute, we are in a empty route. Uh, so this is basically like a front end load up screen. Um, so, oh my god, what the hell? What was that then? Oh, hang on a second. Let me just try and change that because that's going to be. Yeah, that's not helpful. <laughs> hang on a second. Uh, what have we done here? It's nothing. It's just literally a uh, me hovering over the. If you look on the left hand side. Oh, fucking hell. Basically, you see at the bottom. If you look at the bottom of my screen, here, where these folders are, if I hover over a folder, it's basically. If I go over here somewhere. Nope. There. So sphere. It's telling me what it is. <laughs> so I need to just tweak something for that. Uh, it might actually be better. What am I using for YouTube's thing? Uh, game capture. Don't want that. I want a window capture. I need to capture the whole bloody window. <laughs> right, how's that gonna do? Should have lit Manchester confirmed. It's just gossip. <laughs> it's leaves Manchester that. Hang on, let me just uh, resize this up. Hopefully it might work. So if I hover over that. Oh, it's not going to work, that. It's a fast this is because it opens up different windows. Um, do you know what? I'm going to use the YouTube in one. And I'm just going to put a um, alert box on it. It's easier. Let me just do a test, make sure that works. Yeah, right, that'll do. I've just followed myself apparently. Right, I'll have to do that because I don't think. Yeah, it's not doing anything. I need to double check on that, and I haven't set up properly. Right, anyway, skip that bit if you're watching on YouTube. Right. So, um, right. So basically, what we're going to do is set up a plugin. So before you do anything, uh, you need to make a plugin folder so you can make your own um, scenarios basically, and this, that, and the other. 
I can't remember if it was instead of game capture or display at all. I, I need to double check on that, but I can use this for now it works, so uh, it's not a problem. Keith, thank you for the bits, mate. Appreciate it. I was on game capture earlier. What is this one, actually? Oh, yeah, it is a display capture. Yeah, it is. Right, sorry. It works on here for now. I don't need to, I don't need to mess about. Right, so I've already made a plugin folder, but I'll just show you how to do it. So my plugin folder is uh, somewhere down here on the left hand side. There, train some TV scenario content. That's my little folder I've made. So to make this folder, it's dead simple. So top bar, you click edit, go to plugins down here. It brings up this window. And then you want to click new plugin, click content only. And then give it a plugin name. Now I was watching Matt's stream last night, and apparently, if you you need to be careful where you save everything to, because it, I think Unreal gives you 256 character limit. So if you've got like 60 characters there already, which is about right for me, I've got it basically it's sort of base set up. If you can make it smaller, it's better because if you're going for bigger names, you're gonna run into problems. Um, so basically, what you're doing there, put your name in, so put whatever. Um, you can put an author name, description, URL. I didn't bother with that. Matt didn't bother with his, so all's good. Um, oh, bloody hell, fire! <laughs> 2,000 bits! My lord, Kay, thank you! Fucking hell! What a lad. I really appreciate that, thank you. Um, really can you? It doesn't matter, Matt didn't do it. So anyway, once you've done that, click create a plugin. I'm not going to click this, because I've already done one, but that's just demonstrating it to you there. So once you've done that, It'll make your folder, which will be in here somewhere. You have to find it. It'll, it goes in alphabetical order. So once you've got that, um, you're basically sort of you're good to go. You need to make a folder. Um, this is depending on what you're doing, but for, we're making scenarios. So to do that, you literally right click in here, click new folder, and it'll add one in there and just type it in. Uh, so I'm just going to delete that because I don't need it. So that is our scenarios folder. So we're going to make a scenario. So first of all, we're going to choose a route. So I was thinking this evening of doing a route. Uh, for, what can we do? Uh, Leeds, Manchester, I think we'll do. Something simple. Where is it? Leeds, Manchester. So you select the route, like so, and then you present it with a shed load of folders. So this is everything for the route. Uh, what you want to do is look for the map, which is this one. So double click, and then you'll find there's more files and bits and pieces in there and folders. You want the map itself. Quite Fox 09, thank you very much for the follow. Good evening. Uh, so yeah, find that, double click, and it'll load up the map. It'll basically load up. If we do this in our editor for JT or what we use for um, building the routes there, it takes donkeys to load the routes up because that's to cut the shaders. Where this has already got everything cooked and everything's all compiled, so it literally is instant loading, which is something I wish we had in, in our side of things. So you guys are absolutely laughing because you have to wait a week for everything to compile. Um, if you want to make it full screen, press F11 so you can see everything. I mean, we're not going to do everything in this because we can't see, obviously, the um, the window. It's loaded with Huddersfield. Um, so this is what the route looks like in editor. Um, let's make that a bit small again. Yeah, there might be motion blur, it's in the editor. I don't have to turn it off, to be fair. There might be a way of doing it. I have never actually done that. Let's have a look. Uh, settings. Let's have a look. Uh, preferences. Where's preferences? Edit. Preferences. I don't know if there's a way to turn it off or not. Motion. That's not how you spell motion. Motion. Ah, motion blur. Uh, that's showing motion blur. How do you turn, do you turn it off? JSMCK, thank you very much for the uh, resub there. Really okay. uh, appreciate it. Thank you. There's probably a way of turning it off. I have not got a clue. And to be fair, for what we're doing tonight, it ain't going to make an, any issue. Right. I don't want to be around here, though. I want to be... Uh, I was going to do something at Red Bank. Just gonna, we're just going to make a scenario coming out of Red Bank's side in the Manchester Victoria. Um, as best as we can with what we can do. So I'm going to jump to the world. So literally, you, you bring up your map. Basically, like Train Sim Classic. Um, rather than control and uh, clicking like you're doing Test Classic, there, just literally right click and jump. There's another way of doing it. This is just the way I do it. 
Uh, you can also do it if find it works. I'll show you. It's really simple. I did it this way because on our route with JT, it was forever. It took forever to have it before we got these jump two points put in. So by the time we got them in, I was just I just drilled in that. I was just right clicking. But you can also do it in uh, where is it? Place marks. So if you click place marks, so next to the Google map there, click that one, and you'll see all the locations. So you can click. Let's click that one. I think it's Ravensthorpe. It'll just go to it. Um, but yeah, if you want to go to a more specific place where it's not a, so these 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 actual points place marks are at main places such as like stations, yards, and stuff. If you want to be in the middle of nowhere, you're better off going to the map and then pinpoint the exact point in the map. But yeah, that then ones take you to exact like proper points of interest, if you will. Uh, if the in-game keybind works, it's F2 to disable it. Let's have a try. I don't know if that's done anything, to be fair. Nah. <laughs> it's probably something totally different. I don't know if you can turn it off or not in the editor. You probably can. I might have to find out on that, actually. I'll, I'll have to inquire. There must be a way of doing it. Um, I can't remember if there is or not, though. Right, so we are at Red Bank Sidings. So, now we need to go back to my little folder. So, we don't need that. We need my folder. So I'm going to have to make a new file in the file, if you will. So click scenarios. So let's say, for instance, I'm going to start a chain of train sim world scenarios for a front track simulation under my own developer name. So basically, you want a, a folder for each scenario. So what, let's let's say for for an example, we're going to go in an order. So each scenario I release goes in a number. So you can either go one, two, three, blah, 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 blah. blah. Or um, you can go in alphabetical order. You, depends on what you're going to do, really. But for, probably for, I'd probably say for yourselves, if you're going to do it this way, you're probably better off doing it in a number rather than an alphabet because you're only going to have 26 letters in the alphabet and you're going to run out. <laughs> so you might as well do it in numbers. So eventually you'll just keep doing your own scenarios and you'll have shit tons of it one day. Um, so let's make a folder and let's call it S. C01. So that's SC number one. Um, you can call it whatever you want. I just do it the way I've been doing it for uh, DT, uh, for JT, sorry, under DTG. Um, for the Blackpool Preston scenarios, it's like SCA. So scenario A underscore um, whatever you want. But for this, I'm going to put SC1, SC01. So it's scenario one. So open that. I'm just going to. Bring some over this side because I've got some stuff just so I can uh, relay back to. At the end of the day, I'm still learning myself on stuff, so some things are still a little bit um, fresh sometimes to me. But I've got something that I can follow that I've uh, put ready. When the next train sim driving uh, TS Classic? Uh, some point, God knows, no plan as such. Uh, I've got a question in the editor. I want to spawn at Bishop's Lydiard to test out your timetable but it always spawns me at Wilton so right so right here we go so I can quickly show you what you want to do for this so if you want your scenario to be the one that loads you need to set it um, my, my, my borrowed tankard um, so let's just say for example we're going to um, do one of the scenarios off this route so Leeds Manchester um, the scenarios in the older routes are a little bit different. Nowadays, you get a game play folder alongside the actual content. So basically, what happens these days, you've got the route, which is this one, and then all scenarios and service mode, tutorials, everything goes into its own folder. I think it just makes things easier if you're ever going to update certain things. Um, but for the older content, everything's in one file. So Leeds Manchester, everything's together. So for a scenario on this route, you can see how they've all been set up. So SC01, these, these are the actual scenarios. So that's how I've just done it. Um, TUs are tutorials. So intros and stuff like that. Service mode, which is your 24-hour uh, timetable. You've got formations and all sorts. So you can literally see everything that's been built. You can go and have a look at this. So if you want to learn how to make a scenario, go and, if you've got DLC, go and look. You can literally go and look how they've been built. Um, I'll show you one in a second. 
uh, as well just an example but um to go and actually test and enable a scenario if you look on this little top box here at the minute there's nothing selected so what i'm going to do i'm going to select the first scenario so what you want to do is get the timetable right click set as play in editor timetable and then also you want the it's not that one i don't think objectives no it's the definition so the definition next to it you right click as that as well and set that now at the top you will see i don't know if you can read this but it says tsw scenario down and out so that scenario is now able to be tested in the editor so if i were to click play it will bring it up and open it so if i click play hopefully it works <laughs> i have not done this in this editor yet but this is how i do it in hours so this should work let me just see if it actually works. It basically plays it how it would in the game, but you can do it in the editor. The only thing is, if you press escape, it ends. So don't press escape if you don't want to pause. If you want to pause it, press your break pause key. Break pause key has been a thing in the editor way before the photo mode. So we've actually had break pause key for yonks. So you can actually break pause. Like you can in TS Classic. But um, you can't fly around and break pause. But yeah, if you press escape and you've been testing the scenario for 20 minutes and you're back to the fucking, you're out of the editor again. You're back in the editor mode. So just be wary of that. And I've done it before. I, I've done it a few times. And I've got like nearly towards an end of the testing the scenario. And I think I'm going to pause it. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> so yeah. There's some other cool things I can show you as well. Um, there's some commands and stuff like that you can put in. So you can actually do stuff like um, async keys, if you will, when you're driving a scenario. It takes a minute, by the way. The first time you load a scenario, it, it, it'll take a minute. So just don't think it's not working. It is. It's just deciding to start loading things. <clears throat> AI driving what? Uh, he can, I think, set it as that. He can do it. So, so this is how you'd see it in the game. So it's loaded it up. And there you go. So if you want to test a scenario, make sure you press them two things. Um, click on the editor window and it'll start. It'll stop being like a, a laggy bugger. So there you go. So that is how you would go and test. So that is an average scenario. Literally as it would be in the game. So press escape, it takes you back out. But yeah, if you find that you're um, you're obviously doing something and you wanted to test that and it's loading something totally different, it's because it's loading some default stuff. Um, actually, I think it was already here. So yeah, if you want to clear that off your window, just literally click that little drop down next to play and click clear and it'll take that scenario off. Now it's not loading anything, it'll just press play, it'll just load you in some default area where it's set. So it'll, it'll, I'll probably go to the root origin, I would have thought, I think. I'm not too sure. Um, right, so I'm just quickly going to show you what a scenario looks like before we go and make one. So let's just look at this one, for example. So what we got, we have a dialogue folder. That contains all the voiceovers or text, whatever you want to put in there. This doesn't have voiceovers, though. It was just basically text appearing. So what it is, you've got three files, which are sound waves, or, and then you've got your sound cues. Um, I'll show you how to set one of them up as well pretty simple you can either ha you can either do a voiceover if you want to have voiceover in there or you can have um just text if you don't want to talk in the scenario you don't have to you can just have text um it's dead easy provided it'll let me do this but i can show you how to set up if not either way um anyway we can we can look at stuff if i can't do certain things i will literally just show you what things are and when certain things are more available to do i will go back to it remember this is a beta it's not finished done this is this is a beta at the end of the day so there's still stuff that ain't there and finished quite right but uh yeah that's where all your sound stuff is so if we open that would it let me open it i don't know no it's not let me open it so i can't show you that's annoying certain things are cooked i think and sort of things that i let me open them. i think believe i believe the objective one isn't going to let me do stuff but we'll find out so if i get to tiles that is a bit like tracing classic so when you want to put scenery in a, a scenario it's exactly the same as that um when you plonk something in you have to set a window up which um if i can remember where it is 
TSW3 tools, scenario, scenery tool, there we go. That brings up a window. You can actually snap this to the top. There we go. I just have that like that. So basically, to to do your scenery, um, what you need to do is actually have the definition for that scenario. So you go in there, um, and you look for what your scenario definition is, and then I'll just snap it. Yeah, you can snap it. You can actually snap that wherever you want. I just, I have it there. Um, to be fair, but you can close it down when you're done. We don't have to have it there. You can get rid of it. It's in the, it's in window and go to TSW um, tools. So yeah, you look for your definition of your scenario what you've made. You choose it and then you tick the enable scenery. You can't tick that box until you've got a definition. But make sure you tick that box because if you go and plonk scenery without ticking it, it's just going to plonk it in the world and you're not going to see it in the scenario. Um, so yeah, it's always vital that you put that in first and then tick the box. And then whenever you put your scenery on whatever tiles, it'll obviously populate it whichever tile it is. So SST is our scenario scenery tiles and then it's telling you where they are. So like minus 19, uh, X, X minus 18, Y 19 for that one and so on. So that's that. Um, you've got an image. So that is the image which, so if you think of it in the main game, when you click the scenario and you've got, I think, start scenario or whatever it is, you've look, that's a little picture appears somewhere around that area. That is what that picture is. That's the little, that is the little thumbnail that you'll see in the main menu. For the scenario that is just the file that's imported you actually have to set that in the definition which i'll show you in a second uh, you've got help tips you don't have to have these um sometimes it's it's good to have them uh, i mean really to be fair for you guys you're not really going to want to do this because you're just making a scenario this this these are really for dtg or whoever's making the main route um but if you want to you can do it it's it's a bit long-winded and it's a bit of a farce to do it and implement it but if i open that it's not gonna let me so we can't show you that's great <laughs> thank you we'll get back to that again basically what it is it's like it's a window and it's got loads of fields of text um you've got to type them in a specific way for it to work and then you literally you import them into the uh, objectives which i can uh what the hell i can't show you it because it won't let me open the um I don't think uh no it won't so i can't do anything with that i can do certain bits but there's another window that opens up and it's not gonna let me do it because it's not been set hopefully that gets sorted soon because that's really vital you need that for making your objectives um so again that's something we'll have to come back to when it's been enabled uh definition you can do your definition so this is everything to do with the uh, scenario so title um version number if you wish to put one in there i've never done one i don't think anyone really does um you've got hidden which i'm not sure where that oh, that's whether it'll be hidden in the front end a tutorial um that's mandatory so basically if you hover over these matt wants to know what i'm up to I'm trying to make a scenario but i can't make a scenario properly because um some things aren't available yet <laughs> so basically making part of a scenario basically setting up the scenario how to make it i think mainly what he did last night to be fair um, although he, he didn't do it for very long, but we're going to go a little bit longer with it and just talk things. Um, yeah, so that if you hover over it, it actually tells you. So that one says whether this tutorial is mandatory and should be launched as soon as the player chooses that route. So can you remember in the older days of Train Some Worlds routes where you would open that route and they would literally chuck you into tutorials, which really was annoying because you, you didn't need to always do it, especially if you reinstalled the game. Uh, you can tick that or untick it. So if you want to force that to play, then tick it, but they don't do it these days. Um, showing training center fundamentals whether this scenario should be shown in the training center fundamentals I don't know what that really does to be fair but you can tick it if you wish um, so there's a few little things to note here so plain text name you have to have all, all as one word uh, so down and out is all as one um, capitalize obviously where you want them to be yeah the look up look down yeah I don't do any of that <laughs> uh, scenario type is a mission or a tutorial so that defines whether you're going to have a tutorial or a mission obviously uh, mission is a scenario tutorial self-explanatory um version uh, no sorry order number so this is, would be an order in so if you were making let's say example five scenarios for a route and you wanted them to be in a specific order in the list um obviously they you would number so let's say 
that, that, that's number three, so that's further in the list. Wait a uh, Description. Evidently obvious. No, you've got to be careful with your apostrophes or you get told. I, I got told about my apostrophes. I had to fix some apostrophes that were missing. <laughs> so when will we be moving on to making the flag moving Blackpool? Never. We're not. Uh, difficulty rating. A bit like TS Classic. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can either... You can move the bar up and down or whatever you want to do. Difficulty tags. I've never done the tags. I don't really know what they are. Uh, I've not actually ever really ever seen any of the scenarios have that. But if you go searching in the stuff you've got owned, you can have a look at what things are. Because th th this will help you. Literally go and have a look at other scenarios. Because you've got them. You, you own them. You can go and have a look how they were built. And it'll help you out. It'll be a lot more easy when objectives and stuff are available to look at. Because that is the main key thing. That is the hard bit. And you need that. You need to have a look. But I can't show you because it's not available to do anything with it. So it's really, I really actually didn't realise. Um, to be fair, if I if I'd have known <laughs> before um, planning tonight's stream, I might not have done this tonight. But it's a bit late. But I can still do stuff. It's still helpful. I think this even just talking you through stuff like this, it's quite helpful because not everyone's gonna have a clue what they're doing when you open this up. It's like, what the hell's this? Bit like how I was last um, the last eighteen or so months ago. I was like, what the hell? Uh, minutes to complete is your duration. Easy. You'd, you'd have to probably drive the scenario, obviously, and see how long it takes you to do it. Then you can put that in. Start, location, and end point. So, use the names on the map. Um, so, if you use the exact names um, on these maps, it'll, it should work best, really. Um, if you go with them names, where they are, how they've been typed in, that's how, you, how I do it in there. So... Stanley Bridge to Manchester was that scenario. Trains involved. So when you have a train that you're working with and what you're doing, um, you will add this to here. This is basically, so when you look in the front end of the menu, which is the main menu, when you select the scenario, on the right hand side, it tells you what route it is and what train's involved. So that is literally um, whatever's there. So you might have two or three trains. So for example, if you look back at the Chinley route, and they did the Gala scenario. There's three trains that you could drive on there. It actually showed you all the trains that were used. So you literally go and add them in. So you, you've got to add the RVD for the train you're using. Whether it's a, DB, a DMBS that is. So if you drive from the DMBS, you go and pick the DMBS. If it's a DMSL, you go and pick that. Or whatever it is. If it's Class 47, you just go and look for the RVD for the Class 47 you're driving. Uh, and that will show what you're driving. Icon. So this is that icon that I showed you before. That is that. So you would import a picture first. And then when you've imported it, you go to here and then you search for it. And to make sure you're obviously using the right image, you click search there. You can click that little magnifying glass and it'll show you. So that is that one that's been used. Uh, so that is that. Timetables. So you can see here there's different timetables. PC is the timetable at the top. Um, that is also Gen 9. Is it Gen 9, which is the most up-to-date? It's Gen 8 and Gen 9, isn't it? So Gen 9 uses that timetable at the top. You've got Xbox One, PlayStation 4. So this is, I think, where you start to see your reduced timetables coming. So you can actually select different timetables. You can have different ones. Um, you can add more timetables if you wish to. So they would be the normal standards, but then you would potentially you'd go down here. You can add another timetable for your reduced ones if you had to do so, which is obviously sometimes we do see that. Uh, player services. So click that drop down. That is how it's typed in on your service in the timetable, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, so whatever you set as your service name, that needs to go in the player-only services uh, name. And it has to be exactly the same so it knows what you're driving. Um, if you want to start on foot or in the train, you have to do different things. If you're starting on the train seat, you literally just tick. And then you need to get the name of the train and you need to put the... Um, ID of the train in there. This one's starting on foot, so this starts with a marker which you have to set up, and I'll show you how to do that uh, in a bit. Uh, is there anything in there? So, right, so scenario trigger spawn. So, if you're playing Train Sim World, whatever route, on foot in the timetable, and you're running around and you happen to find a little blue blip somewhere on a platform or in a yard, that is where you can obviously start a scenario from so that is what you put in here so you pick the location where you want that blip to be um it'll give you an offset if it's under the ground you need to just like raise it on the z-axis like, a little bit or whatever you then need to 
go on the scenario trigger view asset and you have to select the um view base on that one although i've used view bp on our jt stuff and it seems to work i think no one's come back as it does yet <laughs> and then um what you need to do on this next bit it's a bit weird it's the way the wording's done so display text you need to put even though the snow's called down and out you need to put the down and out scenario but the and scenario a lower case and then the scenario isn't how it would be an upper and all that if that makes sense it, it's all weird it's just the way one really is if i'm going too fast for you by the way do ask questions but this is pretty self-explanatory this sort of stuff and obviously you'll be able to see this back on youtube and you can pause it and have a look um, but hopefully i'm not going too fast for you uh, date and time simple it's all there uh, please be aware that apparently it's a bit confusing now this is apparently the game works on actually like summertime and winter time so you have to sort of work on where you are and you have to tweak you'll find out if it's not right because something will be a bit off so you might have to adjust the time by an hour um and that it's a bit odd um other than that really it's not much more you need to do um these ones i haven't got anything in you might find other scenarios might have these in you can have a look but i've never put anything on half of this lot hello josh how are we doing yo 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 glad i'm not yeah it's literally daylight yeah daylight savings basically yeah it, it does something to do that i don't know why the guy that helps me out from time to time he doesn't really know why i think it's just something that was done in the original csx um heavy haul what we call the game and it's just something that's never changed no other josh there's many joshes um so yeah moving through um xp which is this one here um tick the box now the way dtg do things whether you want to award that much for your scenario it's totally up to you you could go and put shit tons but dtg award 5000 xp for completing a scenario um as standard so that is what all official scenarios have you might want to just award someone a thousand points it's up to you um I probably won't say go over 5,000. I'd probably keep it in line with everything else. But it's totally up to you at the end of the day. You can do what you want. It's your editor to play with. You can do as you please. But I'll just carry on doing as what I know. Um, outfits. So you can set outfits for um, the driver. You can put um, whatever you want for the male and female. Um, you just literally type there. Male. It'll come up with all the male ones. So depending on what you route up you're on you can obviously pick something so if it's 1986 like our jt one is you can go and pick the 1980s uniform if it's modern you go and look for the modern one if you look for the ones from the route you've got you'll know you're at the right era um it's literally um simple uh, uh rob good evening a quick one have you been told the work around for the no i haven't <laughs> is there a work can you actually get the objectives to work i haven't got a clue If you want points, go and play Space Invaders. That's okay then. Yeah, if there's a workaround to get the objectives to show, well, then please do tell me, because I have no other clue. If you want to drop me a PM, or if it's uh, easy enough to tell me on here, and that's all good. Because I have not got a clue. I didn't know there was any workaround yet. I'll uh, I'll carry on whilst you uh, do, whether you're typing it or whatever you're doing. Um, so weather, pretty simple. Um, there's loads. All the weather systems are here. Create a child. Oh god! Create child versions of the objectives and use those. I found. How do you do that? <laughs> P PM me, um, Rob, on how you how you do that, and I'll have a look if it's easy enough to do. I I will do that. Just so I can show. I mean, this scenario I'm making isn't probably going to have a release. Like it's just literally a little play about. Um, but yeah, the weather is easy. If you want dynamic, it's DWS, dynamic weather system. Um, other ones come with different routes, but if you use dynamic, you can see what's there. Oh, someone in the forums found out how to do it. That's great, good stuff. Um, yeah, there's all sorts there. It tells you what they are. You can pick what you want. So that one's already got a preset set up there. You can change the wetness and stuff and if you're doing snow if you want it to be really snow at the beginning you can literally change how much snow there is and, and piled up and stuff like that. you just literally drag the slider it's a slider windows so you just literally slide it up or down depending on what you want if you want it to be piss wet through just literally lob it to the top if you want it to be fully snow show it to the top 
Um, I mean, if you're starting to snow, snow, you, you sort of do want it to really be snowy already. Um, objectives. So, oh, in the core. Right, okay, let me do this now. So, in the core folder. Blueprint resources. I see blueprint resources, not blueprints on its own. Have a look. And then you'll find all the objective action. Which is, I presume, all these in scenario or scenario manager. Is it there? There's nothing in there. That's a reward one. That's no, not. Uh, scenario manager. Would you like to compose a BP? That's it. I've got them here. They're here, aren't they? Look. Uh, actions. So it's them, isn't it? Uh, will this be cross platform? Uh, you won't be able to do um, editor on any other platform. But I don't know how it'll work if you. For example, make a scenario on here and then want to release it because obviously consoles. I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, try and making sure. I don't know how you do that. How do I do that? <laughs> this is a good question. I don't have a clue. I've never done this before. Is it just. Let's open the options folder. There might be something down the line, there may be a manager thing where they might be able to you, uh, have it where you can obviously lobby them into other games or what, I don't know. Uh, yeah, here. Yeah. So I need the one for the scenario at the minute, don't I? No. Uh, action button BP. Is it basically just... Right clicking and uh, creating a job, just clicking create child blueprint class of it. So is it making basically its own copy of it? So for example, I can make all of the ones I want. Mikey, thank you very much for the follow. Good evening. Can I do like select several and then do it all in one go or do I need to do one at a time? Uh, I need coupler. I'm not fuss for cargo. Enter exit. I've not used that before. Group BP. I'll need that. Uh, junction. I want that. Lever. I want that. Look at. Maybe. Oh, is it one by one? That's a bar. Right, let's try it. Then. Okay. I'll underscore them as child and leave them like that. Coupler. I need that. And Brexit, I don't need that. I don't need fuel. Group, I'll need that. Uh, I don't need inverting access. Let's put that one. I need that one. Look at, I don't need look at. I need a move to. Is it a case of op opening them up? Is it uh, Control and S on t hovering over the top of it? Or can I just open it and... Oh, I can just right-click and save it. I'll do it that way. That's fine. I'll do it that way. I uh, don't need a multi-seat blueprint. I don't think. I've not used that before. Pressure. Never used that. Seat blueprint. We need that one. Uh... Single BP. Simeograph. I'll do that one because that's if you're doing a cold start. Speed BP, no, and we need a weight, most likely. Right, so, save. Any with an asterisk, you need to save them. Save that. So basically, when I'm going to put these in, I'll need to look for the ones now with a child under, at the end of them. Pretty easy. At least if we can do this, that's good. Happy days. Until DG, obviously, uh fix um it working properly we've got a workaround which is good so that should be everything i need if not i can come back and find some more um 
I think everything should be right there. Markers, do I need anything on there? I'm going to need some Warp 2 markers. Although these are in core as well, so I might be alright. Oh, the other ones will be the children ones that show. That, that fair play, even better. Do I need to do anything with the markers? Because I'm going to be using Warp Up 2 markers. But they're in core as well, so should I need to do anything with them? I might be alright. I'll try markers. If, if not, we, are, we know we can come and do that. So thank you very much for that. Top. Top stuff. Right, excellent. Yeah, if you need to, I, at least we know we can do that. That's good. Thank you very much for sharing that info with me because um, that, that really helps us, keeps us going. Uh, so what else were we doing here? We were talking through uh, stuff, weren't we? I can't open these anyway. Yeah, definition. So where's my definition? Pretty much we're there really. So what you need to do, uh, when you've got your objectives, you can't do that until you've got your objective file. Credit as well to Greg Ryan, where if you're here, if you're not here, whoever you are, thank you. This is what I mean. People go looking for things. If something's not working, they'll find a way around. And look how quick that is then. Someone's found a way around to get things working. Win win. So yeah, that one is your objective. So once you've made your objective file, uh, you can select that. You need to have it selected, otherwise it's not going to fire up the objectives, basically. Um, tick the box, which is auto-generate objectives from that service. Composer, um, you, you find the composer as well for that, so it basically goes with that. Yeah, literally, yeah, that's it. If you don't have that, it's, you, 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 you've got a boring scenario, really. Um, score, leave the score as it is, and then controller, um, don't really need to mess with that, it's up to you. You can override the uh, imperial or metric measurements if you wish to do so as well. So that's that. Uh, timetable, I'm just going to show you what a timetable looks like, if it'll let me. Well, let me open it. I can't open it. Anyway, we're going to do a two. We're going to make a timetable anyway, so I can't show you that um, really at the minute. I can't. Hang on, I can. I've got a, a screenshot of a timetable. Let me just show you. Timetables. There we go. That. Is a timetable. To be fair, it's off the Blackpool route, but it doesn't really make much difference to you. But that's what a timetable looks like. That's what it looked like when we're done. Well, it'll be different because we're not making the exact same one as that. But it's a, it's sort of same sort of concept. We're going to do something where we're going to couple up to something, and then we're going to hopefully try and drag some stock away if it all goes to plan. If we get that far, if we don't, we'll continue it anyway. So let's go to our folder and let's start adding some stuff to it. I'm going to put the big microphone on as well now because it's uh, not normal because people might still come down actually so I'll leave it because otherwise you'll hear footsteps everywhere. Right, so go to my folder or your folder, whichever folder you're going to. So scenarios, scenario one. Josh Tech, thank you for the sub there. Really do appreciate it. So, we need some files. And what we need are three important files to make a scenario work. One's a definition, one's the objectives, and one is the timetable. Um, obviously, we'll add dialogue and stuff as we go along, um, provided it'll let me do it. We might need to do childs of them. We'll have a go. We'll see. So, right-click in the window down below. And we are going to look for... We'll do the blueprint class first so this is the objectives so at the minute if you've not done anything before it'll look like this open the little tick down the bottom it'll open everything up and we're going to search uh is it root timetable so s c Oh one, we'll just go timetable. You can name it whatever you want. Welcome back, Prof. One step. I'm gonna pause here for a second. I'll, I'll when I do the YouTube, it'll all skip through here. But I need to nip upstairs because Joshua's just started crying. But delete for two seconds. <laughs>
Hello. Yes. There is TSW picks. Right. So that's the timetable file. So just quickly open it. So you'll be presented with a lovely little window that's really confusing. Click event graph, and that is what you'll be running on. We're not going to do anything in there just yet, though. We'll get everything in there first before we start playing. I will probably have some more TSC stuff to it. I've just sort of moved everything. I like the TSW stuff at me, so that's what we're sort of doing. So I've just sort of made it reflect. Um, so we're going to add. Hang on. I might have just done something. Have I done something wrong thing there? Just let. Hang on, let me just delete that again because I think I've just done something wrong. I can utter Burke. Let me start from the top of my folder because I'm doing. I'm just. Balls and stuff up here. I've got miscellaneous. Data file. So it's a data asset. For goodness sake, what have I done here? I've just put the wrong thing into there. So definition. So. Scenario definition, right? This is better, right? Do it at the top, work down. That's always helpful, isn't it? Gareth, good evening. How are we doing? Thank you for the resub. I'm very well. I'm very well. So, SC01 underscore definition. Right, here we go. Cooking on gas now. Do it properly. Um, objectives. So, it's a miscellaneous again. No, it's not. Uh, blueprint class, sorry. So, yeah, blueprint class. And then we are going to type in scenario manager B P, and that is that one there. So we're going to put uh, S C O one underscore objectives. <clears throat> Made your first service for a proper diesel girl on the W S L. That's not a bad idea. That to be fair, I might have a go myself. Could have a little play with that. Glad to be doing well, Gareth. Uh, so we've got the definition, we've got the objective, we need a timetable. So this is on the miscellaneous. Root to timetable, there we go. Uh, so SC01 underscore timetable. So I'm just going to save them. And that. So, uh, first of all, we can go and... What can we do first? I'll also put a folder in for uh, dialogue. So any audio stuff will go in there. We'll use that at some point. Not yet though. Go in definition first. Although we'll have to go back to it, because we'll have to add some stuff to it, but we can start off with this, so... This is a definition. I'm going to put that over there, because you don't really need to see that as such, but that's just... Um, bits and pieces, I want it just really sort of for me. Going over things, so... Top bit, display name. So we're going to give it a scenario name. Um, shunting... The stock. We're going to call it shunting the stock because we're going to be uh, shunting some stock about. Well, actually, uh, collecting. No, collecting the stock. So we're going to collect it off a of service. So basically, a train's going to come in and we're going to collect the stock off it and we're going to move it away. Um, so, collecting uh, the stock. All is one word on the plain text. It's a mission. Uh, order number doesn't really make a difference to me on this one. Uh, description. Collect rake of coaches that has arrived into Manchester Victoria. Call it whatever you bloody want at the end of the day. Um, easy enough. I'm going to put as a difficulty of two because we're going to do a bit of potentially some, uh, some bits of point work as well. Um, minutes to complete. I'm just going to stick 30 minutes for now. It probably might take longer. It'll probably take longer to make the damn thing than it does to test it. Um, I need to just double check on what the map's called. Uh, is it Red Red Bank Carriage Sidings? So it's 
So I'm going to type in red bank carriage. Sidings. Or is it just Manchester Victoria, I think? Yep. Manchester Victoria. Um, no waypoints. You can put waypoints if you wish. Um, so if you're going, to, let's say, Manchester, uh, sorry, Red Bank to Miles Platting via Manchester Victoria, you could put so Red Bank, Miles Platting, and the waypoint would be Manchester Victoria's. That's, I think, the way I understand it. Uh, trains involved. I haven't got one yet. I haven't got an icon yet. If you wanted to run another scenario after it, you can pick one. So you could maybe do your own scenario, and then you could always have a DTG one appear after. So you could go and pick a DTG scenario, so you can continue. Uh, that's totally up to you. You don't have to put anything in there. Uh, timetables. Um, so we have our timetables. We can actually set these up now. Uh, even though there's nothing in them yet, we can put them in. So, um, SC01. Uh, There we go. Really, what I what I would also probably say is pick a route ID. I haven't done that on this one. That's probably another thing I should say. Really, is to make it easy to find, you put like a a letter in there or whatever. But we could put TSTVSC, whatever you want. Uh, JP, not a problem. All the best, mate. Cheers for joining in. We'll catch you soon. I also agree that a, a Delta would be great to see for East Coast Mainline. But anyway, that's my scenario. So, if you to make it easy for you to find, put a put a subfix. As you can see, everyone else has got a subfix. So PNZ is Penzance, LMC is Leeds Manchester, West Somerset Railway, WSR, West Somerset, and stuff like that. But that is my one there. And you can see anyway when you hover over it, it's got the path. So it's tracing TV underscore scenarios. So I know what it is. So you need to do that for each one. SC01. Uh, you've got to fill all of these in. Now. Whether these actually make it to consoles, your own scenarios, is a totally different thing. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't even know how to make, actually cook a scenario or anything yet. I've not got to that point. So when I learn that bit and everything, we'll get there one day. Um, moving down, what we got? We're going to be starting on foot. So we'll come and fill that in later on when we put an actor down, which is pretty simple to be fair. Actually, we could do that now. So we want to fill that in. Basically, what we're going to do, let me move over here. So where do we want our scenario to start? So let me get the definition. SC01. So we need to fill the definition into this. So SC01. Tick. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna set the bloody. I can't do that yet because I'm set a level to it. Hang on a second. Let me just. Uh, one second. I have to do something else first before I do that. Uh, so we've done that. It's a bit one of them. You've got when when you've done this a few times, you'll sort of know what you need to go and do before you can go do other things. You you will go back to things and fill things in. You have to have certain things to fill things out. So I can't actually put on here what we're doing yet, and I can't put anything into this because I haven't filled the timetable class defaults or something like that, or the objective defaults. There's another thing you've got to do. It took me an embarrassingly long time to figure out what LMC meant, since it's on license plate in Tees Valley. Yes, yeah, the, some of the cars have the license plates of like GWEs on one of them. <laughs> so we are going to start on foot. Um, so we don't need to tick the box for that anyway. Uh, I'm not going to bother with that uh, at this point. I don't really need to at the minute, but that is if you want to have a blip on the map. I won't bother with that just for now. Uh. So yeah, I don't need to do anything that. Load screen, we haven't got one at the minute. If you wanted to pick a screenshot for the back of the back when it loads up the text, you can put all that in. XP, let's put 5,000. Outfits, it's a 1980s route, so um, mail, 80s. Email. So we're going to go for the one that comes with the route, so it's that one, 1980s. Uh, is it a driver? Is it male driver? 
yeah, Mail Driver 80s. So, uh, if you hover over, it tells you where the route comes from. It, it doesn't matter. If you're going to use Dalton Saltburn as a requirement as some AI, you could probably use that same one because you're going to be using it. Uh, but, we're probably wise to keep with the one from the route or go with Core. If you have Core, you, they're in there. But I'd go with the one from the route. So, that's male. Female driver so i think what happens is if you put both of these in basically you might that you might spawn a male or a female driver if you put just one in you're going to get the one um so let's go with the one from there so that's that weather let's go with dynamic um summer light cloud you gonna let me do that there we go so we don't need anything in that Objectives. We can't do that yet, I don't think. Or can I? SC01. I can. That's there. I can put it in. Tick that. And SC. Oh, hang on. Uh, what was in that one? I can't remember what it was. It's a composer. So it would be Liverpool, Man uh, sorry, Leeds and Manchester objective composer. So basically the composer for that route is what you'll put in there. So as far as I'm aware, this will be right. This might take some trial and error. It might not be, but I think that is the right one. I've never made a scenario for this route before, by the way, just to put that out there. I'm hoping for the best. Uh, other than that, that is all filled in. So we'll save that. Give that a save and close. Let's go to the timetable quickly. Um, so we're going to actually as well want to put this. In, so this is going to be the scenario that's going to load up for us to test. So we're going to set as play and set as play on there. So that is now showing at the top. Although it's not compatible with the route loader because we haven't set the route up yet. It will do in a minute when I tell it what route we're on. So we're going to do that now. So basically you do this in the timetable. So close some bits I don't need now. Timetable. Uh, no, matches. Is it that one? It's that one, I think. Right. So it's not that one. Where the heck have I put that? Objective uh, timetable defaults. That will. Right. So. On this one, you've got to do a few bits and pieces. Zoom in on that. So, the first four boxes at the top, you don't need to do anything. You need to pick the route, though. It's pretty important that you pick this, otherwise it's not going to work. So, you click the box, uh, put Leeds, it should show. There we go, Leeds Manchester, route definition. It now will work on that route. Um, two more bits and bobs. So, you don't need to mess with available and service, it's looping or out like that. Um, I leave uh, auto request ticked. It's these um, mixed flags, you can leave that. Make sure they're all ticked, because you might have electrical or stuff like that, or bits and pieces. Just make sure everything's ticked, basically. Um, don't need to do anything in the next one. It's your start point, front end time. So, you want to put a time. So, we're going to put 1200. Keep it simple for this. Um, the date, start point. So it's 1980s. So uh, I can't remember what year this route is. Does anyone know what this route was actually set as? Was it 1986 or was it 89? 89, I think it was Doncaster. Uh, not Doncaster, sorry. Um, Darlington Saltburn, weren't it? Was this 1986? One? Was it 1981? Okay. I'll just go with 81 balls to it. Um, so, you've got your year, you've got your month. So, it goes year, month, day. So, month, let's just go with the 7th, and let's just go with 15th. The next bit is your time. So, again, this could be trial and error. This might work, it might not. We'll just put 12 o'clock in there. We'll know if it's worked or not, if it shows the same time, we'll, what we want later on. Uh, if it doesn't have the right time, then you, your train won't work. Um, you can also then you need to take TSW4 scoring. So this is a new thing, obviously, since TSW4, so it never were a thing when we first started. Tick that, it'll allow you to basically have platinum um, stuff. 
Um, you don't need to do anything in the override. There's nothing there. I think that is pretty much all you need to put on there. Or is it? Oh, I'm gone. I'm gone. Drop down box. Ah, it's not. It's not. You need to go into this well. So you'll have a drop down box there. So this is pretty important. So this next bit, you need to tick these boxes. You need to make sure everything is the most up to date one. So click root timetable on the first one. Or sandbox route timetable. I've never messed with that one, so I don't have a clue. Um, so click route timetable. Dispatcher. These ones will need to be the most up to date. So whatever's the most v latest one. But this one's only got one there. So V3 on there. So there's two in this one. Click V2. And click V7 on that. Nothing for the bottom. We don't need to mess with that. 83, is it 83? Well, we'll put 83 then. 83. That date and time, you want to copy that. So you can right click these fields, by the way, on the side. You can literally right click and copy it off. It'll copy that one. I'm just going to go back into my definition. Uh, also, compile. In timetables, you have to compile things. So, compiling, and you get a tick. If you get a tick at the top, it's all good. If you don't get a tick, you've got a problem. You need to go and find out what the problem is. Although, it'll give you a little message. Evening, James. How are we doing, buddy? Um, so, yeah, compile and save. So I'm just going to close that for a second. I'm going to come back to it in a minute, but I'm going to put my um, date and stuff into the uh, bit down below. Because we have something now we can fill in. So date and time, right click and paste. That is now put that into there. Um, was there something else I could do on here? I don't quite remember. I might be able to do the um, start point bit now. So my definition has the root set. So if I just minimise that and try this again. There we go. Definition set now. So I can actually put the um, scenery in. So we can now actually put a start point. So I'm going to start here somewhere. We could start here if we wanted. Or we could start. You usually start a snow somewhere it means something like a a building or coming out of a vehicle or a station building or something like that you can start where you want really because i was always told that sort of somewhere important I, w I was taught by adam lucas how to do scenario creation uh, when he was uh, working for dtg so let's put our marker here we've just come out of this building i'm going to walk across to our train so to start you need to drag in a player start which is uh, this one so drag that into there and press it hotkeys so you've got your axis and stuff like move around so w e and r are hotkeys for these at the top here so you can move things press e you can rotate it so that big blue arrow is where that camera point is going to face when you load up so wherever you want to be facing you want to have that blue arrow so we're going to be looking in that direction it is it that's it I've, I've had to talk you through it you see so i'm going to try and do with the youtube video as well I'm going to try and put chapters in on it, so at least you know what's going on. So you can skip to bits. You don't have to search. But um, it, to be fair, I had a lot of learning before I got to this point. So I'm only sort of going through how I learned. So I had, I had a, a, a two-hour phone call to do scenario creation. So, yeah. You've got to learn these things before you start doing things, and it took me a while to get into knowing what was what. And I'm still learning now, to be honest, because I still have to learn bits. Um, so that is our start point. So that is where we are going to load up the scenario. So that is there. So what we need to do, again, is just bring back the definition. Um, where is it? It's start point. Right, so play a start. So we aren't starting in a train. If you're starting in a cab, you just click that box. It'll start you in the seat. And the seat name, you'll get all the name and stuff. I'll do another tutorial if we're, uh, what, another day when we're doing something like that. I can, I can do something separate for that. I can do sort of like hot tips and stuff as separate videos. But for this, we're going to show this. So click pick actor. So now we're going to click this. So you'll see a little uh, little like ink blotch thing where you can pick. So you can pick wherever. Click that. And it'll thingy. But you'll notice I haven't given it a name. On the details panel here, there's a window there. It just says player start. Now, in here, it's now showing as player start 2. Because there's no, there must be another player start somewhere knocking about. Now, I want to rename that. 
and then I want to update it, which you can. So on here, I'm going to put S C O one underscore like a stop. So that is now there. That is now named. So what we need to do is just double click the definition, um, update, and it's now giving it a, the player start. So it's, it's basically updated it. Simple as that. So now we've got a start point in the scenario. It now will load there. Um, so we're going to lose that for a bit because there's nothing else I can do in there at the minute. Just going to save it and close. I'm going to go back to the timetable. So we've done everything in the right hand side. We can now start plotting out what we're going to do. Now, providing this is going to work. How I want it to work. So it's all a bit weird. This you, you can't see anything. It's all confusing. You don't have a clue what's going on yet. So first of all, we're going to put a player train. So right click uh, and create a, a new service. So player service is what we're going to call it. Now we haven't actually got anything on this yet. This is just a service. We need to attach a train to it. Now you can do it whichever way you want. I've just done it this way, but you can do a formation. So you can do a formation and put the service on if you do that. Look, formation, service. So let's get rid of them. So we're going to start off with the formation. Now we need to pick a train. So what I'm going to pick um, is my train. So this is the train that I'm going to be. So we're going to name this for my purpose. I just call it player train. I've always named player train as the player you know what it is then everything else you can give a head code or whatever you bloody want it doesn't make much difference if you want to go for a proper working timetable scenario go for it and give it the proper head codes it's not a problem but for the player i would call it player train and then you call the next bit um player service that way you know it's, it's your train um at the end of the day so we need to put a formation in here um couple things to note as well before doing so on this bit here spawning vault means hey eh? I mean, you can't see the hood <laughs> hey Matt yeah cheeky farmer um how are we doing bud um so spawning vault means spawning from a portal um basically vault is portal um if you're going to spawn a train in uh, off the portal, then you would pick the portal for where. So basically, you're going to pick the location, which is this bit here. So you pick the location, you pick the portal, and you've got to tick the, the, the tick box. That means that train's going to come in off the portal. If you don't tick the box, it won't spawn off the portal. Um, so we're going to spawn in the yard. So we'll pick that point in a second. But we need to pick a train first. So I'm going to look for um, a class 47, I think, for this. I was going to do an OA, but it'll take all friggin' year to drive to it. Um, so, type in 47. It's actually LMC. This is easier. So, LMC is all the formations off this route. So, LMC underscore 47, I think. A type on the box that helps. Underscore 47. Right. So, it's got all sorts here. So, you can make your own formations. I've never really done it before. I will look into how it's done and I will do a video on how to do formations at some point. But for now, at least you've got stuff you can play with off. Um, so what, what we want is a light engine. Um, so you're going to have to scroll through it and look. For, there you are. So LMC, so Leeds Manchester, class 47 light. So that's that. And when you click it, you can see down the bottom of the rail vehicles, it's literally just the 147 there. So you might have to rebuild things if you click compile it's now got an issue rebuild compile it's still got an issue so what we need to do is pick a location you won't uh, get any anywhere until you click uh, click its location so click that i'm just going to move that a second so we're spawning here um so i'm just trying to see where we're going to come out we don't want to put it in there because there's buffers we want to spawn the train somewhere here where it's going to get out of the yard. So you can see over there, it's going to come out of here and can cross over there. So we need to use 
uh, let's just say here. So click there. You can see that there's a little box appeared. It doesn't spawn trains into the scenarios because it'll just kill your resources. So it puts a box for the size of the train. So that's just the, the loco box. If it's got coaches, I'll have boxes behind it depending on the size of the, loco, uh, the wagons or coaches um, on there. So you can see now it's it's put the location and all the ribbon for the train. So that, that is the ID for the train. We're going to be using this ID um, in the objectives. You need I'll explain this in a bit. Compile. It's now. Um, it's not got a, um, a tick, but it's got a warning. But it hasn't failed as such. So we want this to load as well at the level start. So start at level. So that's now there at the start of the level. Um, if you don't, you can have a delay and stuff there. But I've done that for that spawn it with an engineer or conductor so if you want a second man you can tick conductor conductor comes in from the term from um, csx every hall um it's basically it's got engineer for driver it's, it's got the american terminology from the original game this has never changed but driver and uh, second man basically is that in uk terms um and it's aotd is end of train device matt will know what that is um that's tail lamp um so Basically, we don't fill the friendly name. Leave the name at the top as player service. Um, driving from the front. Cab driving in the front. Um, we don't put any of these in there. So we've got the description. We don't put them in there. Um, we don't need an engineer because we're the engineer. So it's we'll leave them as they are. Um, what else we got? Dwell time. Leave the dwell time. Uh, schedule dwell time. We'll leave that. We've got it as a passenger. It's a f I'll leave it as passenger for this. Um, other than that, really, you don't need to put anything else in there as far as I can remember. So we'll leave that for that. So... What we're going to do is, it starts at 12 o'clock, we spawn at 12. Um, we will not actually do what a start time is. Hang on. So 12.01, sorry. So I'm just looking at what my setup is. You don't have to, but for this I'm going to have to put 12.01 because we're going to walk over. So it gives a minute. Stuck at Inkley. Not good. Um, then we're going to leave that there, we're going to put a a weight on here. I'm trying to remember how I've set this up. Uh, where is it? That's going to wait until twelve or two on there for a minute. We'll end up having to tweak bits here. You can see we've still got obviously exclamation marks and all that jazz at the minute. So we're going to want to then. We're going to take this into Piccadilly, uh, Piccadilly, sorry, Victoria. So another train's going to come in at the beginning of the scenario to bring some stock in and uncouple. We're going to then hook up to the back of the stock and drag it away. This is how this is going to work. So that needs to have a weight on it. Uh, how on earth did I do that? I'm trying to think how I did that. It's just a weight. Uh, come back to that one in a second. I'm trying to figure out, I can't remember how I did it on my. Um, oh, it's there, sorry. Load, unload, done. Drop down box. 
So at load criteria, drop down again, load and unload and ticked. Load and unload and ticked. Load and unload all and all that sort of stuff doesn't work by the way. In uh, here at the minute, it's not worth donkeys. So that is now going to be waiting for a minute at the moment, but we're going to reduce that to 30 seconds and I'm going to put it as 12.01.30 because it doesn't need to be so long. It's not taking a minute and a half to walk over this train. So basically what he's doing is it starts at 12, we're going to get some text pop up. It's going to give us, by the time we've got the text and the time to the walk to the train will be about that time. And then a bit of wait time. By by twelve oh one thirty, we should have done what we need to do. Um, so we've done that. We want to stop um, task in a second. But what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to set the um, train to come in because I need to put that in. You see, so I'm going to add another service and formation. One second, guys. So, I'm going to name this just uh, class 47 service. All is one word. And the same name again class 47 service. So, we need to assign another service to this. So, we're going to put uh, LMC underscore 47. Uh, what we got? That's 12 coaches. We don't need 12 coaches. We want 8. Uh, and 7. We can have that. Set 7. That's 7 coaches, basically. We can go with that. So there's a 47 on that. And 7 coaches. Um, that needs a starting point. So, we need to pick a location on the map for that. Go the right way. So let's just start this thing over here somewhere. It's just going to go into the station. So, I need to just work out where we're coming off. So we're going to come off, for example, off this line here. So we can send this other service coming into this platform. So... Let's set this one here, it's about the signal, so click. So that, with that little blue arrow, uh, sorry blue, the little yellow arrow that is facing in that direction, you can flip this though, if you if it spawns it in the wrong place or whatever, you can literally bring up this and click backwards and you can see it's flipped, so it's now going in that direction, but yeah, we went forward, so want to be aware of. So that is now obviously in. So we want that to also have a start time of so it's not drivable, we'll untick that. Red is drivable, unticking it makes it blue, so that means it's an AI controlled train as well. So leave this as auto on um on there. We want an engineer, so it's going to want a driver. So we'll tip that. And it wants an end of train device. So it wants a tail lamp on the rear. Tip that. It's a passenger. And its start time can be uh, 12.01. By the time we've done our stuff, it'll start moving. Um, so that's that. There's nothing else I need to do on that at the minute. It's got its location and it's got everything else. So that is going to have a stop task. So we'll drag off the red node and uh, sorry, no, we'll stop first. So it needs to have a go to. So basically, what you do, how you'll see it on scenarios in uh, my, on your products that come out and you buy, you'll have a stop and then an unload or load task. So put the stop first, then do the load task after. So we'll have this as a stopping task. So it's going to go um, to a destination. 
So we've got a drop down list of destinations uh, here. You can either pick one or you can pick a location for it like exact stop at. So uh, seven coaches, end of the day. I'm just going to do a pick exact one. So it's not a long train. We can stick it in sort of like in the middle. So it's going to come down here, across here. It's going to go straight over and it's going into this platform. So somewhere about there. So click on the track and you see it puts a little blue dot. Uh, bl blue dot, yellow dot. I keep getting blue. I don't like it. It's in blue. It's yellow. So you can just slightly see that on there. Ulvik. Ulvik gen. So basically now we've put that in there and we uh, compile it. We've still got warnings currently. It says um, it's got no end. Basically the issue is it's not got an end, tra end of service warning. So that'll change when we put end of service. Um, so that's going to do an unload. So load, unload, put that there. Um, unload, so that's unloading its passengers apparently. Don't know whether it'll unload them or not because it doesn't usually work, but we'll just put it on there anyway. So that's that. Give it an end of service. So that ends that class 47's working into the station essentially. So if I compile that, it's nearly there. What's that say? It needs a cargo type. Uh, cargo type. So click specify cargo and then you want a type passenger. There we go. So that actually that lo lower part now actually works. So to see where that stopped as well on the map, if I just move over to the side, click the map, you should see it. So you can see the red line, so where it's coming from, so it's there. You see the red line is. Don't worry about the junctions, it, it goes a bit weird, it's just crossing over the junctions basically. So we can see where that ends in the station, which is at my point there. So there's plenty of space for my 47. I think I might have to move up a little bit further actually because I might just be a bit too close to the signal. Easy enough. So basically, if you want to make it go a little bit further up, um, click the stop point, pick location again. I'm just going to minimise that. Move the map. So it will stop in there. So if I put it there, so that's now moved up a little bit. Uh, we're just going to go to the timetable, compile. And save. So that has now moved up a bit. So there should be enough space. If I close the map and then reopen it again. Always close and reopen the map because it'll, it'll, so it updates. So you can see there, there should be a little bit more space. There's, uh, there's definitely enough space, I think, there for a 47 to fit. Comes into the trial and error process anyway. It might, we might could find it might need a bit of uh, work. I agree, yeah, and a modern one would be nice to see. Definitely. Definitely. Right, so that is in uh, in place. You can just see as well, so portals, by the way, you don't see these in the main game. These blue bits are the portals. So you can see where the track goes off dodgily. How'd you add a blocker? Plonk a train in front of it. <laughs> Plonk a train in and just don't let it go anywhere. Um, yeah, portals are just, uh, a bit sort of invisible from the player in the end game, but you, uh, you'll see them in the uh, editor. It says portals there if you see a portal you can use it on there portals aren't like trains in classic where they're here in the middle of the middle of the route it's a bit different as you can see but yeah plenty of portals you just got to run onto the end of the uh, bits of routes but it's a bit different it takes a bit of getting used to. Right, so the next bit I need to do is add the rest of our service. So we need to add our 47 to go into the platform. Yeah, well, if you watch him spawn in, you watch him, it adds one train as it comes into the game. <laughs> uh, so we have our wait task. So what we're going to do now is we're going to want to stop before we're going to have to ask for permission to get into the platform so what we need to do is look for uh, 
Ah, the friggin' hell we're going here. There we go. So, coming into Victoria, is it going to be that one? Right, so, I need to look for the, the most closest signal is where we're going to tab, which is there. So we're going to be tabbing this signal to get into, gain access into the platform. So we're going to have a stop task somewhere here. So, dragging off the go to. So it's a stop at location. We're going to put a specific location because we're going to stop there. So you can see that little yellow dot is in the middle of the track what we need. That's just stopping shy of that signal. So we'll have to tab. Otherwise you're not going to get into the platform. It's ba basically like Tracing Classic where it doesn't let you in. If you have to press your tab and ask for permission. So, um, we'll be doing a couple. Yeah, coupling, coupling. I'll show you that in a second. I'll uh, put the tasks in how that's done. So, you've asked for the permission. You now want to go to the station. So, it's an exact stop. So we need to see where the end of the 47 is. Now to do this, I can't actually do it that way. So what I'll do is open the map. We're going to want... Bring this back. It's all a bit confusing. You need more monitors than one, by the way, really, for this. So click that. I'm going to pick a location. And we'll do it via the map. I think. Will it show me where the 47 is on there? No. Right, let me just click the 47 where it stops. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to touch my monitor. I'm just gonna put my hand on my monitor so I know where the point is. So stop at a specific point, pick location. There. So that's put a location on. So that's sorted. Which is there. Basically, we're stopping shy of the at the rear of the train so we can uh, couple up. So we're not gonna smash into the back of it. So I can close my map again for a minute. Bring this back in. So that's telling us we're stopping at Manchester Victoria platform 12. Is it a broken rail? Oh, yeah, there isn't there. Where is it? Oh no, it's not broken. It's a track joint. Oh, it is broken. It's got a gap in it. It's a big, it's a big gap. <laughs> well spotted. It's a track joint, but it is actually broken. You can actually see inside it. can see it's a bit broken, there's a gap. <laughs> oh, who just sent me a message? Yeah. Everything's a bit out of date of me. I have to basically keep compiling. Checking this in platform 12 at um, Vic. Alright, so yeah, that message popping up. Nothing to worry about. Um, it's just telling you timetable's out of date. So just compile it and save it. So, we have our stop. But we now want a couple. So this, is the next, this is the fun bit. This is where it starts getting interesting. So, we have to drag off another node. Add a couple task. And then what we're going to do is inject the rear of this train onto there. That's telling us that we are going to couple up to the rear of this train. Because it's all injected onto that task. Uh, we don't need a wait time, so I'm going to remove uh, that. Take that off. We don't need to wait. Uh, east side. So that's coupled up to... Um, nothing yet because we need to put a location on, but we can just do it on platform uh, 12. 
so we'll know which platform we're on. So, attack the ball, Manchester Victoria platform 12. That should work, hopefully. And then we could put a weight task on. So, we're going to put a weight task for a minute. We could put a weight at 30 seconds, to be fair. Uh, so, no, no, not one. Right, put a load. I could say load even though we can't see weight it's under this one so when you drop that box down just untick these and it shows weight so we'll put a weight task of 30 seconds take the time down 30 seconds next we will be wanting to uncouple from the front so we have to control the front to uncouple so we need to go uncouple the front coaches basically so uh, uncouple So you don't need to put anything on there. Just leave it as uh, take the time off and wait. You don't need to have the weight on there. So this is basically telling us now. So we've coupled up to the rear of the uh, the formation. We've waited 30 seconds. There'll be a task. We have to inject the task into the objectives. It's not so plain um, as, and simple as that. Cause this doesn't know what we're doing yet. It's just a timetable. We'll go in the objectives and tell it what's to do. Um, we might not get to the objective tonight, to be fair, because <laughs> the time is ticking on, but we'll get there. This could follow on on our next stream, so we'll be uh, thinking. But we can continue all this. It's, it'll be quite a good little series, this, to be fair, and it's something totally different, which is nice to do. So, right, so we've got uncouple. So this will be uncoupling the 47 from the other end of the uh, train. So we're just going to compile that. That's telling us we've got a message. So path direction of travel and compatible. Player service approaches formation backwards, but is expected to couple up the front. Uh, is that right? Don't you dare cry. Oh, it hasn't crashed. And it's worked. It's fixed it. So it's basically just the way the train is. So it's basically backwards for this. <coughs> So that's fixed that. So next bit. So we're gonna put this is to do with two sections of service here. So we're gonna put a weight on here. Uh tick them two tick them two. So it's going to wait for 30 seconds. <clears throat> and then we're going to send this, what we're driving, back through to the depot at Red Bank. What I found different in TS Classic it was the ability to couple and couple trains and scenarios. TSW, seen... yeah, you couldn't, you can couple and couple player trains. You can't couple and couple AI in TS Classic. It just never worked. It's a shame, really, that it never got fixed. But yeah, TSW, you can do it. It's um, It all works. <clears throat> so we're going to send this back to Red Bank now. So go to... Uh, let's bring up the map. So we're going to take it. <clears throat> Carriage side in one. We'll do that. So, destination of Red Bank, Carriage side in 01. We'll uncouple as well off this. We'll move our train elsewhere. So uncouple. Uh, right, take the uh, uncouple. So that'll have the wait time. And then we're going to put a wait on that. So just put load and load, untick. Yeah, it's, it's free to download as long as you've got Train Sim World 4. 
um, LNER fan. So that has got a weight of a minute currently. I'm going to take that off and put uh, 20 seconds on that. So we need to put um, where we're going to send the train once we've uncoupled, basically. Uh, PC only as well. Definitely. Just adding that in there. Uh, right, so we're going to send this off somewhere out of the way. So where can we take this uh, train to? Let me just minimise that. Bring up the map. So we're going to Red Bank Siding 1, which is here. So we should be able to... I'll do sideways head for a second because I can't work out what's what. No. We could actually send this train off up here to Cheatham Hill. Should we send it to Cheatham Hill? Out of the way, we'll just lob it up there and end it up there. I don't think I've ever been up to Cheatham Hill before. I hope the scenery. <laughs> right, so. We're going to time table. So we're going to go and send this as a go to uh, Cheatham Hill signing one. I think it does. Yeah, we'll keep, keep your doors locked, keep everything on you. Um, I think it was number one. The upside is you can hover over the markers it tells you at the top. Uh, oh no, it's carry sign eight. Should change that to number eight. And then we will end service. So that is the end of that. Okay. Fair play. Well, if it is, if it doesn't, it doesn't. Dave, thank you very much for the uh, resub. How are we doing? Good evening. So now, we still can't compile that because something's wrong here. So what's that saying? Unable to find path for player service instruction 7 requires reversals but not allowed by instruction. So can we allow reversing? Tick. There we go. So what's the issue now? There's something else not happy. Something's not happy somewhere. Instruction 4. Stop that a second. Right, do you know what? Sod it. Because I can't be arsed working that one out. Just put that there. I don't like that either. Why don't you like it? <laughs> this is where you have to start looking for stuff. Um. Well, this is us. This is just stay where we end it. Um, AI, we can we can leak because there's a 47 still knocking around at Victoria. We can send that off into a portal if we want. We can send it to a depot. Um, you can do what you want with it. You can send it here, there, or everywhere. Now, why isn't that working? To be fair, we don't need to uncouple. We're just thinking. So we stop there, and we're waiting. So we're stopping and waiting. We're not actually uncoupling, are we? So what is the problem now? It's annoying when it doesn't show you an error where it is because um Uh yeah you can get rid of trains in the portal as well. You can send them in or you can spawn them in. It actually works on here spawn them in. You can remove them and send them out. Why isn't that not working? Instruction four, which is that? Don't quite understand why that's not working.
Also, you got the fun thing is you've got to go backwards one for tasks. So task four is actually task three. You'll learn that when you do the objectives. It's a, it starts as zero, one, two, three, four. I don't understand why the coupling things are uh, throwing an error there. Mismatched coupling range. Uh, let me just review that a second. Right, so it's not there, it's broken. If you press control and left click, it removes the uh, the link between. So I'll just double check where it's broken. Right, so it works up to there. So that's fine. There's a bit of uh, bit of investigation where you've got to do sometimes. Just work out where it's broken. So it's working. It's working fine there. So we're adding the next one. Remove that one, put another end there. It's there that's not working. There's something wrong here. So what is the problem? Hmm. Okay. Oh, there's scenery really. that's cool. Might be a bit more basic because it's sort of the, the arse end of the room, isn't it? But well, at least there's some scenery there. Right, so why is that not happy? I think I might have fixed it. Is that going to work? Fix it. Fixed it, fixed it, fixed it, fixed it, fixed it, fixed it. Basically what I did, this formation end is the back, so that is the back. So that's made it work. It's all a bit of trial and error, you, it, you've got to tinker about with things. So if you take a, take a section off and add things to it and add an end service, you can see where things break in that, as we, we've just done a bit of uh, finding the error there. So... What this is telling me is player train is going to Manchester Victoria to go to the back of the service here, which comes in just before us. We couple to the rear. We wait 30 seconds. We're going to uncouple from the other end. We'll have to get out of foot and go and uncouple it. Wait. And then get back in the train, drive to Red Bank. It'll wait 20 seconds when we get there, and then snow ends. So what do we do with that 47? If we wanted to, we could send it somewhere else. We don't really need to, but um, we can do um, if we wish to do so. Um, now, um, I'm not really showing it because it'd take a lot more work doing it. But if you wanted to add it, doing other bits and pieces, you could literally. Um, you could do actually, yeah. You could send it afterwards. It could go further on, couldn't it? Yeah. Right. So, uh, where is it? So starts. Right, so it'll begin here. You drop off another thing, so it's a a new service. So plus forty seven light engine. Oh one. This can begin at. I have no idea what time we're going to get to Victoria, to be honest. So I'm just going to say 12, 12.10 it's going to set off. We might find that that might not be quite right, but we can send that. We can send that to Cheatham Hill, actually, couldn't we? Go to. Move that over there. I'm going to pick a location of. Um, 
could actually just send it up there, couldn't we? We'll just send it to there. It'll just go past us. I think it goes to Newton Eve. <laughs> but what I'll do is I'll just bob it onto that. Just a bit. One pal. Just close the map, reopen the map, and hopefully it's going the right way. If you find it's going the wrong way, you might have to put a waypoint in, but that is actually giving it the right way, so it's going to there anyway, so that's going out of the way. And then what we need to do is just end the service on that. There we go. That's the player train done. So um So how do I get how do I do it? Comments finger. Basically copy and paste these off other scenarios. Um I can't remember how you find them. Basically leave it a message. I don't know where they are. Just to find so if I was to go into another scenario I could literally basically see that little, sort of like red ring around it, you can leave them on. I copied and pasted it off another DTG scenario, so that's where I actually I got it from. But if you go searching for it, you'll you'll find it. Um, I mean, if we go into, let's have a look. Peter Doncaster. There's some in there. Gameplay content scenarios. Scenario A. Timetable. A look. It'll take a minute to load. It's not going to let me open it up because it's cooked. <laughs> so I can't do that. Right, we'll have to scrap that at the minute because um, it must be cooked. I can't open it. Right, let's go back to mine. Basically, anyway, if we can get that working one day, I'll find out how to do it. I just copied and pasted it out of another DG scenario, and I used it on my own. Right, so we've got that, which is an AI. We can put some more AI in if we wish to do so. Um, I don't know what time we actually get into Victoria, so at this point, I'm not really going to do much AI. But we could literally we could lob one in. We can we can sort of work how long it's going to take us to get there. So put a formation. AI underscore O one. Service. AI underscore O one. So we'll uh, we could technically um, put a, another service in on here. So. Uh, LMC underscore 47. The AI side of things is a bit easy, easy stuff, and the timetable is pretty simple to be honest. It's um, a little bit of trial and error, just trying to get things to work, but um, other than that, it's not too hard. It's more the case of getting the objectives, and that is, that's the tricky bit. So we'll put that in there, uh, give them a location to spawn. So we could have this. Um, trying to work out where's the best place to start this from. Not there, because that's too short. We'd have to put a 101 or something in there. We're in this one. Here. So we have that there. So we need to flip it. It's the wrong way around, put that backwards. So that is an AI. We don't have to have it going anywhere if we don't want to. It's not drivable, it's an AI. We could potentially have this sit there and just stay there. Oh, have we? Hang on, let me have a look. Uh, so a couple to. Hang on. Couple the front of the train, it's going to be couple the back of the train, isn't it? Hang on, couple 
the back to the front. Is that right? No, it's not. Okay, I'm going. That bit's right. So it's the front to the back. A couple from the front. No, it's not right. Just like that. We're not coupling up to the 47. The 47 is going to be going off. Leave it as that and see what else. Oh, it's not working now, is it? I'm going because of uh, the bottom bit. Um, if you don't want it to be a static, you don't put the uh, end bit on here. You don't put this lot on. But if you're going to want it to move, you want to obviously lob some stuff on there. So let's just leave it as a static train. That's just a static train setting the platform. We need to work out what time we're going to get into Victoria before we start plonking that in. So we'll just leave that there. So there's going to be a train there waiting when we get in there. It's just going to be sat there ticking over. Um, so we've done that. That's ticked. I'll check that when we get there, uh, York Sandy. I'm not overly sure. It's a bit different way around. I've done it on another scenario. I'll double check it. Uh, it might be right. It might be wrong. We'll soon find out. So that is everything we're going to do on the timetable for now. Um, we could lob a couple of wagon sets in if you wanted to put a static um, formation. Static coaches, we've got a one. LMC. Underscore mark. Oh. Let's do it this way. Put some vans in, can't we? Some uh, 12 ton vans. Just lob a few bits in. Just makes it look a little bit more uh, nice to look at. If you can call Manchester nice look at, I'm joking. <laughs> Red Bank signings, maybe. Um, in the area we are at Cheatham and all that. So, where are we? We're starting over here. Bot King, thank you very much for the follow. Good evening. So, we'll lob these just there. So, we've got some vans in there. I'll put a rake of stocking just at the back of here as well, and that'll do us. Uh, just going to put another, again, just literally just putting there another formation in. Basically, if you want it to move, you're obviously adding the uh, the service after it, like we did with the player train and all that. But for static, you don't have to. Just put in like this. I'm just call coaches underscore o two. So we're going to put. Um, LMC underscore 47. That's 12 coaches on there. We'll do another set of them. The uh, 7. So just pick a location. Let me start there. So we'll just lob that in there. Move it back a bit. So that is that. Compile and save. So that is everything we're going to put into the timetable. If I just move that back over, just so you can see. It's got the player and all that. It's got the, the train we're going to interact with, hopefully, if it works. We've got a static at Manvic there and two statics at Red Bank. Everything's saved, everything's ticked. It's all, it likes it, so whatever we've done, it, it seems to think it's all good. Um, so we'll close. I think everything, timetable defaults is all done, isn't it? So that's everything. So compile, save. I'm just going to close that. Um, did I set this as the player scenario? I did. So when we load it, it is going to load it. Now we could click play now if we wanted to, but it's not going to give us anything to do. It'll just load up here. So if I was to click play now, uh, one or more blueprints is unresolved. Don't worry about that. Just play an editor. Should still load. Let's see what happens. It's not going to give us anything to do because we've got no tasks assigned to it yet. We've not done anything in the objectives folder. But you should at least load everything in here. It won't give us a title yet because we haven't put the title on it. Just literally load to this point and how we set it. So we'll be able to see if the time's right. It should be 12 o'clock. So this is one thing we can test before we start faffing with everything else. 
again it'll take a minute to load because it's uh, it's its first load once you load it a few times over and over and over again it'll be it loads fine it's just that first time it, it'll take a minute to decide what it's doing it will get there has everything up to now sort of made sense <laughs> Everyone's sort of gone very quiet in the chat. I hope it makes sense. I hope it's sort of helping sort of understand what's going on, how you do things. Cheers, Adam. <laughs> You'll see as well at the top the source controls. Uh, there's nothing there. Basically, that's if you like working like a repository, like how we uh, work it uh, with JT through the DTG um, system. So we've got some slow does this one. You see the time's wrong, so I need to, I have to put the, the hour, an hour ahead. But that's load was in our location ready. So we'll hopefully now be able to add all the other bits and bobs in. Can't do nothing else yet. We need to s sort the time on it though, because that's not quite how I wanted it. Cheers, Dave. Uh, I'm enjoying making the WSR timetable. It's a bit annoying to work with, but it's great when you get something working. That's it. It's a sense of achievement when you've got it working. It is a sense of achievement. So if I put uh, 1300 on that, it should. It shows 12 o'clock. Did you actually half listening? I'm just going to tweet that as well. Just put like that, it should hopefully be right. So we can just test that again. Shouldn't take as long to load. That's it, yeah. It is challenging. For everyone that has a go at this, it will be a challenge because it is so different from TS Classic. I think that's what a lot of people probably would have been thinking. It's as it's, it's easy as make a snorrow as it is a TSC. And it's not that case. It was so daunting the first time I had a go at doing this. It still is daunting now because I've only made five scenarios and three tutorials in the, in, <laughs> in the whole time that I've done this. So I'm still pretty much a beginner at doing this. But I can at least do something like this to at least sort of share some knowledge and help people get at least get something maybe simple made. You'll, everyone else will learn. They'll learn their own stuff as they go along. Well, it's unreal at the end of the day. It's all built in under Unreal. It ain't too bad once you know where things are. Uh, in terms of approach, it's very like MSTS. Once you've got it to work once, it'll be a lot easier. There we go. Right, we've fixed the time, so that's that sorted. So, that is everything good now. It's 12 for how we wanted it. So, that's fine. So, it's just a case of fixing bits and pieces up and, and that. So, uh, objectives. Here we go. Event graph. This is uh, what we are going to be playing with next. Jack, no, he's a tall buddy, not a problem. Cheers for joining. How's route building compared to TS, uh, from TSC? I find it more easier, to be honest. I enjoy it a lot better. It's quick. It's not, well, I say it's quick. Some things are quicker, some things are a bit long winded, but it's a lot more precise. It's a lot more powerful. You can do a lot more stuff with it. I, I, I enjoy building on it. That's it. I, I think honestly, the community. Will, I think once they sort of get an idea, and more people will learn things and share videos and tutorials. More people will end up um, learning it and picking things up and doing things. Um, I think DTG. I, I think there's a a tutorial coming up. I think um, from DTG with Lucas. I'm pretty certain that's coming up soon. I'm not sure if that's this week actually. 
bit of a masterclass with Lucas Klimi. So look out for that if you want to learn some more stuff. I'm not too sure if they're doing scenery or other stuff. No, not a clue. Uh, TSC, I'm, we'll, we'll still be doing the Railways Yorkshire. That's not um, disappearing. We've got to finish that. So I'll be doing stuff TSC wise. Yeah. I haven't uh, abandoned it. Don't worry. Is it tracking signals? Is it on the 12th? There you are then. So there's something to learn there. So that's good. But yeah, it's, it's, it's what people make it. If people obviously um, stick at it and obviously learn and and that, people will eventually one day make a route. If you think about it, how, how long it took TS Classic to uh, get people making their own stuff, it, it wasn't an overnight thing. It, did, and, uh, it didn't take two minutes. Alright. So... General setup. We don't need that. We don't need that. So formation we won't need that. So what we need is the ID of our train in here. So we're setting up at the minute the class defaults. We need the rail ID, uh, rail vehicle ID of our of our player train. So we're going to have to go back into the uh, timetable. Uh, we're going to click our player train, and you see. Uh, here on the rail vehicles at the bottom drop down that box and you'll see there's an ID copy Back to your objectives and then paste that into there That has put that in there. You need an RV um, M of the loco so you type RVM This is where all the bits and pieces are the train all the controls and stuff like that. So RVM underscore um, It'll be LMC underscore 46 Dash four, yeah, BR forty seven slash uh, dash four, and then we need an RVV, so RVV as well underscore class forty seven. Nope, that's not right. LMC forty seven four. So you've got them in there. You're doing things. If you haven't got them in there, you're not doing things. Um, don't worry about um, any of the rest of this underneath that. If that's right, so I'm just going to compile and save that just so I know they're in. Uh, I was always wondering how far you can build a route in Train Sim World before the game will crash. Don't know, I don't think there's a limit. I think the limitation is how long it actually takes you. There's no there's no limit on how, how long a route can be. That's a, a, an absolute total myth that spread around like wildfire. You can make a route as long as you want. It's just it's going to take you a long time and if you're doing it on your own it's going to take you a long long time this editor go for it on your own but the problem is it'll take you some time if you can get a team of people like a little group of you doing things i think you'll get things done a lot quicker um but if you're going to make a five mile route on your own it's not a mass massive issue if you're going to make a, a 60 70 mile route on your own it's not going to be a five minute job Put it this way, we started work on Train Sim World at JT. In, well, we started in January um, two years ago, but we didn't actually start building to June. So we've been building since the June of uh, last year now. So, yeah. And there's one, two, there's two of us on scenery, although Mark does track as well. And the signals and the speeds and we've got three asset builders that's our team and it's taken us that long to build um, our first route so make of that as you will and that's doing it at nine to five if you're doing it for 7 p.m till 10 p.m on a, a monday to friday in your spare time it's going to take you a long time <laughs> it, it, it's one of them it's just what you make it if you're going to do a small route it's not a massive issue it's, if you want to do these big massive monstrous routes it's going to take you some time just bear that in mind that's not me to deter people. Go for it. Try and do these big things. It would be great to see someone make a massive monstrous route with the detail and stuff like that. It's just I don't think we're going to see anything like that, to be quite fair, in, in this editor for a few years. A bit like how TS Classic, really. That's when you start seeing things. People obviously working and working and working, and eventually these things start coming through. Uh, you're going for a lot of detail and making a statement. I don't know about making a statement. It's just making it stand out really if there's any any statements to make we knew the game could do it nidator barn can do it nidator barn had the detail so we would knew the detail could be done and, and that, that they set a, a 
set a sort of a bar really that was a that for me was a bar to try, sort of be with and that was a bit of an inspirational route for me um so i worked towards that but we've, we've got the detail the detail is there um definitely at uh, nidatol barnet which is the uh, one of the german routes uh, that came out last year the little little branch line route it's a lovely route. it's not a long route it's about i think 20 miles or so something like that but um it might even be 20 miles to be fair but no it's a lovely lovely little uh, rural branch line with tons and tons of detail it, it is stunning honestly it's a very visually beautiful route um it's different from the sort of normal stuff you see uh what software do the asset builders use so jt it's blender um yeah we've got a video on our youtube channel uh, to be fair ryan if you have a look at it you'll find it on there ben's gonna start mid east plus go on yes we love that route <laughs> um you can do free desk max i believe as well of course you can do max if you if you know how to do max but blender is what jt uses right so where are we at so the voiceover um intro doesn't have anything in that we don't need that outro doesn't need anything on there we need the cinematics intro is it intro i'm gone uh cinematics so we want loading screen So loading text, you need that one. So this is the when you load a scenario, this is the text that appears over your screen when you first load up. So you look at the little box in the window, at the title of the screen. This is what does that. So get rid of that. We don't need any of that stuff. Oh, I've lost it. Hang on, where's it gone? No, it's there. Get rid of that. Right, it's there. Loading text. So tick the box because it's all greyed off at first. So tick that. So you want your title it has to all be in capitals this um so what have we called the scenario is it collecting the stock so collecting the stock um there is a load time of six seconds on these so put six so that basically stays there for six seconds so that is all you need to do on that compile and save hey, i'm looking forward to this next one yeah interesting Bad Villable Stockheim, that's the one, yeah. If PlayStation Xbox can handle big and long routes with them, it's... Well, Xbox One hour route works on Xbox One, and we've got detail there. That's a 50, just a 48 mile route. East Coast main lines on the Xbox, and that's what, 75 to 80 mile route. You can do it. You can do it. It's impressive that the old Xboxes can handle it, to be honest. Just we see the, the lower uh, reduced timetables for the consoles, but that's an optional timetable at the end of the day that you pick. Yeah, the routes were short. Definitely they were short at the beginning of the game. I mean, I, I don't think that's because they couldn't do it. It's because they were learning the game still, most likely. The developers were still probably learning how to build routes and stuff. So development time... at, at at the early stage was probably a lot longer until they obviously got to grips with everything and sort of got to speed with it. Obviously these days there's routes go out left, right and centre so obviously it just shows you the speed that um, obviously they've got to and they're more fluent with it. I don't think the shortness of the routes at the beginning is anything. This I think is where the stemmed of the myth. I think this is where it stemmed on the, uh, the old Trains and World can't do big routes. Um, I think that's sort of where it stems from that at the early days where you're getting short routes like West Somerset you're getting Great Western um, Leeds Manchester was the biggest route really weren't it that was what 40 something mile Carlsle Wurzburg was that the, um, last year's Trains of Will 3 route that was something like 100 and something weren't it was it kilometres though I'm not sure but yeah I think that's sort of where that comes from that stigma so yeah I won't read too much into it so um, we've done everything in our default. We don't need to worry about anything down at the bottom, as far as I can remember. So you can literally just close all these off 
them on there. You don't need to really worry about them. I mean, you can probably do something, but I've never touched them. I've never been told to use any of that, so just literally close them all off. Don't need the cinematics window. Don't need that. So that's literally all I, I have there. Shorter routes equals less resources and dev time. Yeah, definitely. In a business sense of view, definitely. If you, you want them to get stuff out there. But the DTG have done bigger routes as well, so they do a mix. Which is nice. I think most developers have done a sort of a mixture in size of routes, though. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, we, we are just a small team where we've only got one route on the go. I'd love to see JT one day, obviously, ha um, Matt go bigger with the teams and have more teams. A couple of route building teams, that'd be great if do, uh, JT ever got to that stage where we could uh, do more than just one route. At the time, but obviously at the minute we can only do one route. I think Starbridge, for, just for a small little route, Starbridge, you could really cram the detail in that, just a short run with the train and have the, as much detail oozing into that little section. I think it'd be quite a nice little route, to be fair. I know it's only a mile or so, isn't it? But I, I, I don't see the issue with stuff like that. But you could also, uh, well, I'm on about the Starbridge branch, <laughs> just a little, the little dinky thing, the 139. I, I think that would just be a great little uh, fun addition. <clears throat> You may be free in February. I have to have a word with JT. <laughs> Is that when your um, your work stuff finishes, Ben? Is that when you're Is it with the contract and stuff? <clears throat> Get him into town to bridge north. SVR. I think SVR would be quite good. Yeah, but it depends who makes it, though. End of the day, uh, right? It, might, it could be another dev, you never know. Alright, Ben, okay. No, you never know. If, if it's something that you're looking for, you'd definitely have a word with JT. You never know. That's not me saying go for it, but you never know. It's always worth asking. Something could come of it. JT got faith in, but did you know? ELR would be uh, desperate for TSW route, having rest around TSC. I'd, also, I'd love to see another like, heritage railway. To be fair, ELR would be nice. SVR would be nice as well. To be fair, some nice uh, scenery on that, definitely. Peak Forest route, um, I've had a little tinker with recently for TSC. It's uh, it is coming on really well. It's looking great. To be fair, can't wait to start. Sh uh, hoping we'll get the J JT streams up and get urban again soon. Stuff so we'll be able to do all that. Oh, don't worry, I won't get told off for saying that. <laughs> I know what to and not say. Right, anyway, shall we actually do something? Because I'm just sat here in a window. People will be like watching us on YouTube thinking he's waffling on here. Uh, right, so. Uh, just double checking there's nothing I've missed. I think we're okay on that. So that is the defaults. Just double check on the second window. Nope, we're good. We're good. Right, so that's that. Now then, objectives, everyone's favourite thing. So what I'm going to show you quickly is a picture of what the objective window for a scenario could look like. There you go. So that is how you put your objectives into a scenario. That's how it all works. <clears throat> I, we're all hoping that our root sells well. <laughs> we really are. Got to keep us in their job. Kingsway line would be nice. Yeah, some down that area would be lovely as well. So that's what a scenario, it, when it's finished, looks like, basically, in the objective form. So that's what controls all everything. Um, you've got to put all components in this. We're hoping it's going to work. I'll be back in a second, guys, though. Just going to go and grab a drink. <laughs>
Right. So, we have done all of that, haven't we? So, I'm just going to double check in the definition. I, I can't remember if I need to put um, something in the definition to do with this. Uh, no, I don't, because that's... Nah, we'd have to do that if we're starting in the cab, so you'd put the uh, ID in there. I don't think we have to put the ID in anywhere else, to be honest. It doesn't need it. So, yeah. If you're starting in the cab, you tick the box for starting in the train. Um, starting train seat name, so you put the... Um, I think it's just the player service or whatever it is in there, and then you put the um, the ID. Seat ID, sorry, that is not the train ID, the seat ID, which is uh, in a component on here. Simple enough. I can do a little video tutorial on that anyway. Uh, right, so what we are going to do is add some components. So, uh, so let me just put my little uh, thing up here. So, we'll start off with an introduction and all that stuff easy enough so I'll show you how to do that so you're gonna start by right clicking first of all you need to add the composer and stuff so event on composer um, will add service so this is basically adding the service in whenever you do these right click it and look for the parent function link them together like so you're going to go off there, type branch, add a branch, and then down here, you're going to drag off, uh, type in equals equals, and then that is that, and then you're going to put, oh god, me, hang on, So we put in player service on here, sorry, that's right. So this is a this is equals to our player service. That's what I thought it was believe player train or service. So service so that is looking for the player service on our timetable basically. So whatever our service name is, you need to put that in there. That means it's it knows what it's looking for. <clears throat> So that's that. So we're going to do a flow add action. So this will be the first action that will happen. So this is going to be to do with um, our introduction. So on the introduction side, if this works, this is hopefully it's going to let us work. So we need a wait BP. So wait. Let's work there. We go. This is what we did before for the child thing. So that is wait, await BP. So give it a name. Um, so you know what it is. So it's scenario one underscore introduction. Now you've got all sorts of fields you need to fill in for this. It's uh, all the fun and games. Now there's a little hot trick. Now, this little hot trick, not everybody in DTG even knows about this. Even I taught people in DTG how to do this. I got taught by Adam Lucas, but not everyone knew this. So, on the general setup here, you can see where it's got um, the ID all greyed out. There's nothing in the RV, uh, M and RVV. Go to self at the top. And you see where it says snap to ribbon location here. Tick it. And untick it. It's filled the boxes out for you. That'll save you a world of time. You don't want to be typing them in manually. Or copy and paste and everything all the time. Because it takes forever. Now. Uh, let me just. Check something here. Where is it? 
voiceover. There we go. Some stuff's on, uh, on drop-down box, you need to literally uh, open them up. Literally is Tom's tips and tricks. So, that's that. Right, just literally every two seconds, I think you go and check something, and then I will uh, go through this. I need to double check something on. I can't show it because I need to double check it on uh, the other version. I'll be literally two seconds, guys. <laughs>
So, on this, I'm going to put, so, in the wait time, you're going to put one into there, you know, wait until the countdown, we've already done our little fill of the boxes here, uh, we don't need to put anything in the virtual HID or anything, because there's no components for this, it's just basically an introduction task, uh, so it's going to bring up some text. Not a problem, Dave. All the best, buddy. Cheers as well. So, that is all for there. And then, you're not going to put anything in the UI, because we don't have any pop-up messages on this. So, what we're going to do, we're going to hide at the object and location. We're going to hide about and complete. This all depends on what you're going to be doing if you want like, a normal task. So, if it's like a lever task and stuff like that, buttons pressing, you'll, you'll want to hide the middle one to be ticked, top one unticked, cannot hide anything, but with it being a message, we're going to hide everything. So, next bit is voiceover. So, we need to add a voiceover. So, easy peasy. So, let me just minimize. Go to dialogue. You're going to right click. So, where your voices go, all your voiceovers, all that, lot, all text goes into here. Uh, I'm going to do a text one for this because I'm not going to do a voiceover whilst I'm on stream. So I'm going to put a sound cue. I'm going to call it um, SC01 underscore um, S01. So basically, scenario one, sound one. You then uh, where is it? I'm going to import. So what you need to do, basically, the way these are done, I'm going to put a file in what I have through work. Basically, it's a silent WAV file. You can make your own WAV file. If it's audio spoken, it doesn't matter because it's going to be a spoken file. If you want for text, it needs to be a silent WAV. You can make them yourself. Pretty simple. I've got a 5, 10, 15 second one. We're going to use a 10 second for this. So, to make your own... You could easily make one basically if you use the sound recorder thing in Windows. Mute your microphone and make sure you've got it set for the um, WAV. You don't have to. If you don't if you don't want any pop up text then don't worry, but to have pop up text you have to have an audio file in here. So if you want to have pop-up text, you have to have some form of audio file, otherwise that text isn't going to work. So you can make your own WAV file, literally you can make a sound one, just literally just record for 10 seconds with the microphone shut off. It's, as long as there's something there, it has to be there, that's the way it is. So I'm going to use what I've already got. You don't have to if you don't want to, it's just the way a game is unfortunately. So I'm going to import, um, I'm going to move this over, so there's stuff in there you obviously might see. Um, so I'm just going to go into the silent wav. Ten. I've got three seconds, five seconds, ten seconds, and fifteen. So that's that. Now we need to link them together. It probably is limitations from the earlier games. Yeah, definitely. Double click this. You need to have a localized wave player. Link them together. And then 
you will want to put the um, so SC01 underscore uh, S O. Oh, you know what? I haven't done. Hang on. Idiot moment. I've not bloody renamed it ever. S C O one underscore S C O one. So sound cue, sound and sound cue. So this is a sound cue. Right, so it's renamed. Now go back into that, and now you can search for it. So SC01 underscore SC01. There we go. So that is now linked in the silent bar. Next up, you're now going to want to put some text into it. So double click, and it brings up. Is it this right? Oh, gone. Am I on the right window? <laughs> Hang on a second. Have I done this right? Where is it? Behind somewhere off this lot probably wants uh, spoken text. Right, hang on, that so the, yeah, this is everything's open. So shut format, playback, sound, loading. Keep subtitles. Get rid of everything else. You just need subtitles. It's like being back in day one. This everything is all the settings are totally baked back to default. Like how I've not had them set. Right, so what you need to do is the spoken text. So um what can we put for the de what's in the pop up? Right, so that says, um, you find yourself at Red Bank carriage sidings. You'll need to collect a rake of stock for Manchester Victoria to be stabled here at Red Bank. So that's the text, but you need to put it in again. You need to do it twice. Don't ask why. It goes in the subtitles as well. So you need to add, uh, on the subtitles below, it says zero array elements. Click the plus, and then drop the box, put the ta text in there, and that is that. Um time it's 10 seconds it's a 10 second WAV file put 10 in there save it close it save the other one close it that's that so we need to now tie that into our component for the introduction so um, there's a delay on this so eight seconds so basically there's a delay of eight seconds now that takes into account the six seconds um, pop up for the title uh, so this will play two seconds, if I get this right, is it two seconds after that goes, when you load up, I think. No, oh, type 8. It's not so bad once you've done everything else, but, um, it's just the beginning one, it's a little bit, um, take, it's a setup in that. Once you've done, like, for all your other tasks, it's not a problem, can you literally have them, like, pop up, like, one second after you've done a task. Um, it's just for the beginning bit. Uh, so, SC01, underscore S. Oh, one. That's that. And then we're going to click uh, the tick on the complete action on finish as well. And then that is that for that bit. York Sandy, thank you very much for the follow, mate. I appreciate it. So we've now got that in there, but we haven't finished yet. Now I'm going to drag onto the action. And there we go. So now that is going to play that at the beginning. Um, now we can add another one if we want. We can add a, um, a briefing as well. So that's induction. We can now add a briefing. Now head to this loco or whatever. Um, onto there if you wish to do so. Uh, I'm not going to bother for this one just for the, the, the sense of this. You could add as many text pop-ups as you want. Um, be there till Christmas. But it's basically the same again. Um, on that so next one we'll do is put a um, sit in the seat task hello Rob how are we doing I'm glad this bits working after the little work round 
was a bit of a, uh, a short windy stream. Although we've not really got very far. <laughs> we'll have to continue this and uh, we'll, we'll probably do another stream where we keep going and get it working. So I'm just going to compile and save that. Yeah, just want to make sure I've got the right thing. So I could have had another briefing, but I'm not going to bother. So I'm going to put a sit in the seat uh, on this next. So. A sit in the seat is a seat blueprint. So on the component, we're going to put seat BP. So scenario 01 underscore um sit in seat oh nice i never thought about using that route to be fair i wouldn't mind having a little play on that could do also you could have a little fun do on there uh, diatribe thank you for the follow as well just a moment ago good evening uh, right so we're gonna Put all the bits and pieces into this um, sit in the seat uh, gubbins. So. This will be the fun bit now. So we're going to flow add. You can do all sorts here as well. Um, you can have like a master action and then you can add sub action so you could actually bunch all these together i'll cover that on another do um another video or stream where i can show you how to bunch so basically you could have a set of tasks so you could have like put the reverser into forward so master key on reverser forward and release the brake once you've done all them that task finishes so you can bunch them together rather than having loads you can that you can do it different ways sometimes it's uh it works out better to do it in separate sometimes it's better to bunch them depends what you want to do really it's totally up to you west cornwall local that'll be fun let's do some uh we could do it you could actually do a little fun there and back on the, the center earth bit <laughs> so we're going to put um flow ad action for uh sitting in the seat so we need to fill this out. So we're going to quickly just go to the self, uh, snap to ribbon location, tick and untick. So that fills the uh, the RV M and all that jazz out. Now we don't need anything in the variable, so we'll just sh shut that off and close that. On the setup, we need um, a seat component. So driver seat. Now are we on the back or was it the front? I think it was the back, weren't it? It was driving from the back. Driver seat B. Drive seat front. I think it was the back. We'll soon find out in a second because we'll do a little test here because we're, we're getting quite late in here so we ain't going to get much further. So we don't need to fill anything on the HID component because that's all stuff to do with like cab doors and AWS and all that stuff. This is the fun bit. This is where people don't realize how long it takes to make scenarios. So. Seeing this, hopefully it'll be a little bit of an eye opener to people. Uh, so it's a seat, so that's all set. So we're going to go to this bit down here. Now we're going to put a bit. Of, so if you see, think of the UI in the, the game you've played scenarios before, it'll pop up some text at the top. Enter the cab. You have to put the top part in capital letters. So we're going to put enter the cab. And then we're going to put sit in the driver with an apostrophe. See. And for whatever reason, I've got this capital D, so it's going to go in there. Uh, we're going to tick hide complete notification. And that is literally all we need to do for that and all we have to do now is literally plug it in onto there and we have now got the component on there so compile and save compile and save every time you do something because if it crashes you'll have to redo it again so as soon as you finish one compile it and save it and just plug it in um it's 
something like that. Now, you don't have to breadcrumb every little thing. Now, at this point, you, you're going to be thinking, people know how to play this game. You don't have to give them breadcrumb instructions. You don't have to master key on, put the reverser on, um, isolate the isolation switch, all that jazz, um, isolate the AWS, um, put some lights on. You can. You don't need to handhold at this point because people should know how to play this game and know how to play that Ruby and that local because they'll have done stuff already through the DTG side. You can put a couple of them in there. You could maybe put um, sit in the seat, um, reverse a forward. That's it. You don't have to do everything. Um, you don't have to do everything. You can literally give them a couple of little, little things to do. Um, you can add you can add every little thing you wanted if you want, but it'll take you forever. The more you you want to do, the longer it's going to take you. So you can literally do a little bit. So we'll sit pe sit in the seat. Tell them to sit in the seat. Obviously, you want to do that. Um, and we'll do a reverser uh, forward. Put a reverser forward because everyone at that point should know how to, they've got to put the AWS on if they need it. This route you don't need it. Mark a lights. You need to put your lights on. People are going to know that. Uh, and all that lot, so you should know what they're doing. So, um, I'll put the reverser on. Uh, reverser is uh, oh god, what is that on F4? It's seven o'clock, bloody remember. Is it a lever? Or a... I think it's a lever. So, do a flow, add action again. Um, lever. I think it's a lever. We'll soon find out if it's a lever or not. It's SC01. Reverser. Forward. Now, I'll put 01 for that because we might need another reverse task. Always put a number at the end of it. You never know. Uh, right, so, again, we're going to that and that. This is where the fun sort of starts. So reverser. I think on the 47 how it goes. Engine. So it's off. Reverse. Engine only. Forward. Now you can find out what everything means and the output values and stuff by routing through the files. So if you're not overly sure what values and stuff are, um, if you go to uh, your timetable, you can find the file where it's at. So if you click the train, click that. No, nope, not that. Um, oh God, where is it? There's a thing you can go to search for the train. There's control values. Basically, you can go into the file and get the RVM. I find where the bloody thing's hiding. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember where it is. It's in the RVV. Sean Brockway, thank you for the follow. Good evening. It's somewhere. I'll find it. Hang on. Let me just go somewhere else. Because I, I had it the other day with something. I actually opened it up. I see a one. Might be on there actually. On there. If you go to... Um, RVM. If you... There we go. If you untick that a second, go to the RVM, search for that, untick it again. It should take me to the file where it is. There, there we go. So, I think that's the right one. Nope, it's not. It's one of these files. Where is it? Go in there and you find it through another location. It, there is a way of getting to it. There's probably an easier way of doing it. It's just the way I've done it. Uh, it's just trying to find where the bloody thing's hiding. It's not that one. 
There is a, there is a file somewhere in all this lot that tells you what it is. Is it this one here? We'll just go through and find them. No, it's not that one because I can't open it. There'll be certain ones I can open, certain ones I can't. Cost 47. Data. Real vehicle definition. It's not that one. This is what I mean, it's, it's literally, you've got to go snooping around and literally go searching. That's curves, it's, it's all to do with the setup of the train. <coughs> there is there is a file somewhere that it'll give you all the stuff. It might be within here, and it might be hidden. On this, I don't know. It might be hidden because it's simiograph. Um, you might not be able to find it. That might be a bit more of a tricky challenge for people. Am I, am I right there, Rob? Are you still here? I'm pretty certain you find it in here and you open something up. It's a bit simiograph related. You can't open simiograph, can you? That'd be why you can't find it. I've answered my own question, I think. So, you'll have to dig and guess. It's quite logically uh, simple. Um, once you know what you're doing. So, basically... A reverser. Ah, I was in kitchen. Right, I can't go and find um, basically the, the control values for, for the 47. So it tells you obviously what the control value states are for the reverser and the lights, what, like 1 or 0. That's simiograph, isn't it? You can't see it. Am I right? Yeah. I think I've opened the file, but you can't open the bit to do with the simiograph because you can't open simiograph, can you? Simiograph isn't uh, available existing stuff so you can get to the RVM here I oh, don't need to so where can I find it uh, for the good people at home is there another place you can find it because this will be helpful for people I can't, I, I've only done it one way before in the class definition In the RVM. So if I go to the RVM here, search it. Uh, class definition. Bell vehicle definition. Is it there? Not that one. Thresholds? It's one of these. I'll open that one. That's RVD, isn't it? Hang on, hang on. Uh, that's the RVD. Not the RVM. Not a problem. We'll find it. This would be, I just wanted to show this really on the stream because then people at least can have a look to work out what settings are. RVV, right. Let's try the RVV. Hang on. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> are that many windows open here? I'm trying to find things. You do need more than one monitor. Let's try the RVV. Number binding. No, it's not that one. Materials, nope, definitely not. Hmm. Hello, Concarcher. How are we doing? Oh, no idea. I've definitely seen it, but. I've used them before. It's in here somewhere. Not sure because it's in the simigraph side of things, you might not be able to get into it, but 
That's everything to do with the 47. That I can think of. Uh, anyway. If we find it, we'll cover it again. Unless uh, Rob finds it in the meantime. Yeah, the uh, bridge isn't looking too healthy, is it? Simulation folder in the respective vehicle. So we've got... I can't open that one. It's a simulation asset. I can open simulation asset. I could open that. It's got all sorts in there. Well, there's nothing in there that tells me I can open up the file that shows you, you know, all that, the, the values in the graph. Then the view folder, try RBV. Oh, one gone. Look at that. Hmm. I I don't think it's give, giving us everything here. I think there's some stuff hiding somewhere. I think it's hidden, isn't it? I think it's because it's simi-graph related. I don't think it's going to let you look at it, which is a shame. Right? Oh, I'll have to scrap that. That was a waste of twenty minutes. <laughs> oh, that's annoying. Couldn't it? So make that a child. Hey up. I just saw a graph then, hang on, where was that there? I just saw everything. I literally just saw a graph of all the stuff though, where the frig is all that just gone? I just literally saw is it on here? So if you go for master key on the right hand side, is it on here? Uh, we want master key there. I'm presuming on the right hand side it should give you the values. Of it. Must keen to forward. So we've got the wrong one, haven't we? It's the RV we've got the R V V, so we can shut that. I'll delete that. And do the other one. R V A? <laughs> I've got an R V A. So basically, if you go into the class four, for the example, of this one going to class forty-seven, going to view, then they're in here. You have to make a child at the minute. Whether this changes in time, I don't know. Just deleting the file and give it a second. I'd rather not get rid of the stuff I don't need. End of the day, this is all learning and everything, so we're still learning here. A totally different editor to what we use a day to day job so I've got an RVA not I've got no RVM so it must be that 
Let's just try that. So, reverse, uh, reverse of F. Mm. That looks exactly the same as the other one. This is an event graph. Shit. I'll just shut some of them. That's gone. What a bit annoying. This is well confusing. It's totally different to what I've seen before this. Reverse the forward. I'm expecting there to be like a value for the stuff. But I don't know if it's here or it's hiding. Navigation interaction. Ah, I found it. So, I think that's, that's the direction interaction for the reverser. Zero, I think. Is that right? I think that's right. Zero, minus one, and one. Well, that doesn't explain where um, engine only would be. Well, gone off on a tangent here, aren't we? To try and find something. I mean, I I think I I know it off my head. Anyway, what the, what the setting is? <laughs> Just want to sh show that you could have a thing where it'll tell you where everything is. Let's just have a look on this one. For the break. Oh, it's the same thing. There's definitely something else somewhere that I feel like I'm missing. I've seen a graph, an event graph, everything on a graph. I don't do that. Construction. I feel like there's something else that's not showing. And I, I have seen a graph of everything. But I have a clue. Anyway, it'll probably come to light at some point, but for now I'll just uh, go with what I know. So basically. James B, thank you for the raid. Good evening, guys. Um, so, we're going to check for a specific value um, below. So, output. So, minus one is off. Zero is... Hang on. I think it's right. So, forward, engine only, reverse and off. So, minus one is off. So, we're going to want this into... Um, minus one, zero... Is it? Fucking hellfire. This is so conf this is conf you're having something in front of you, you've got to sort of guess here. The reverser, because there's four states of the reverser, so is it minus two? One f one is what we want anyway, so one. And at zero, is it minus two for off, I think? Something like that. We'll try that anyway. So we've done that. We're going to pick... Um, Reverser back. So a virtual hidden, you have to put the reverser. And this is where you start doing like levers and stuff and handles or whatever, and all bits and bobs and buttons. So we're gonna put some text. Reverser. Reverse ray or reverse er. Capitals again. So set the Reverse to forward. The action, as far as I'm aware, and the, the rule is it. Well, you have to have a rule really for your own stuff, but the way I'm doing it is set the reverser forward capital letters. Tick again and compile. So let's just put that in there. Let's let's try it. Let's have a little test to see if this works. I'm going to close my timetable, I don't need that, I'll just compile and save it, just to make sure. Save all that, I'm just going to close this off. So, 
hopefully, this will work. Catching something else in my definition, I might have missed something else in my objective one. I bet there's something I haven't put in here actually. Object, no, it's in. I think it's alright, I think we're good. Let's click play and see if it actually does help. But that, that thing for the, the values and stuff, I'm pretty certain there's something that's hidden from us. In this editor, we can't see the the graph for all the values, which makes it a little bit more tricky. You have to sort of guess. It, some stuff is quite hard to work out without that. When you've done it a few times, yeah, it's a lot. Easier. I mean, obviously, learning different trains is a different, it's a total different kettle of fish because everything's different. I mean, I've never made a scenario with a steam loco, um, diesel, electric. They've all got they've all got different features and different setups. All the same sort of idea. It's just that everything's different. Different values and stuff. It's, just, it's learning the values, I think, is going to be the hardest bit for people. I don't I, I don't expect to see a shit ton of scenarios off this anytime soon. This is top-end stuff to learn. <laughs> I mean, we've only got this far. This, it just sort of shows how long it takes to do stuff. I mean, it's taking me a lot longer because I'm obviously demonstrating stuff, but... It's not easy, but when you've done it a few times, it, it all becomes a bit more clear and makes sense. Oh, excellent! There we go. Collecting the stock, so it's uh, that's worked. So let's. So that Hopefully, we should get a pop-up message. Apparently not. Why has that not worked? <coughs> nope. Something hasn't uh, happened there, has it? Something small, something minor, that I haven't done. Right, what have we not done? Uh, the white BP. Have I not put something in there? Oh, there's nothing on the wait time. That should have something in there, shouldn't it, I think. Yeah, there should be something in the wait bit there. I've not put nothing in it. Why have I not put... I thought I put something in there. Maybe I didn't put it in. Everything else fixed, right? Ah, because I've done a scenario before where it's had the bit and the wait time in there. And everything else was... It all worked. Uh, I don't need a lock on voiceover. Hmm. What have I not done there? Everything else seems to be set. I don't have to put anything in there, do I? There'll be something missing. I'll have not done something. Oh, 
gonna check against everything I've got here. Miss out this definition of a double check. Uh, uh, event start or event begin play. I've got event add service. Is that? Oh, hang on a second. It's meant to be will add service. What an absolute burk. <laughs> All this video has been an absolute sham. Hang on. I put the wrong bloody bit in. <laughs> so everyone's going to be making their own little scenarios on this, and then they'll get to this part of it, realise they've done half of it wrong. Uh, I'll pose up will add service. There we go. See what I mean? It's all. It's my fault that because one of the pictures that I've, my little images that I've gone to look at as a, a guidance thing here, I've, I didn't zoom in quite full enough, so I sort of like had to guess it. Um, there we go. Right. Try again. See if that works. Hopefully this now works. <laughs> Apologies if you've been sitting there for the uh, the duration of uh, 3 hours and 24 minutes to get to this point to realise that I did one bit wrong. It's all fun and games. It's all a learning curve. Don't worry, you're all, in, you're all in safe hands here. I've only made some scenarios for the uh, JT route. <laughs> Don't worry, they work. Which as well, um, I'm going to say if it's not, you won't be able to open. You'll be able to look into how some of them scenarios are made as well. You won't be able to look at everything. Just give it a minute. Cause it's deciding what it's doing. I mean, you can do scenario planner in the game as well, so you can make scenarios in the game. I'm, I'm gonna have a look at that at some point because it's a new version of it, so I want to have a play with that. Here we go. Does it work? If you want to do the proper end, like exciting stuff, this is a way you can do all sorts. It's uh, we've only sort of like skimmed the top of it here. Yeah, it needs documentation at the end of the day. Hopefully, they're gonna do documents or videos and all that sort of stuff, but. Please give me a message. Let me get rid of that one second thing, that one at the top. Because maybe that shouldn't be there. But I've had it in one of my snows before and it worked, so... God knows. So it's in control on the, uh, the sound cue side of it, the, the delay there. I sort of double check something else that's... Uh... Yeah, it's, uh, I haven't really played with it only once, the, the old original one, I haven't played the new one. But, um... something I'm missing here. That's all right, that, isn't it? I'll double check because there'll be something I might not have put in somewhere. 
that's okay. That's okay. Uh, close that. There's nothing on there. Class defaults. That is all set. That's all set. That's all set. Nothing there. Definition. Let's double check. There's not anything we've not missed or not done yet. There may well be something. And I know what it is. I haven't put the player service. Is it that? That's what it is. There was something I've not put in there. So in that bit, in I did say I'd have to, you have to come backwards and forwards when you're not fill stuff out. It's one of the things we haven't filled out. So in the definition, I'll just go to my definition bit where I put in here. Their service. So you put the service name that you're giving it. Come on, you bugger! Don't do that while I'm typing. Player service. Line there now as well. I can put the train we're doing. We're on the class 47. Right, drag up. <laughs> we'll get there on the night. Don't worry, we'll be fine. It'll all work out in the end. So I'm literally just copying what I've done on my own scenarios, which has worked, so. With a slight bit of difference. <clears throat> and this is sort of mimicking a service that I've done on a Blackpool, but it's very, very. a more basic form. It's missing a lot of the uh, the more intricate stuff on this one. I mean, we're not going to get into Manchester Victoria tonight, but. that'll be for another do. We'll be able to add more to it. We can fill another stream out with this, and make another video out of it. Matt could build a charity stream out just doing making a scenario. It takes that long to make one. <laughs> Probably me, yeah, I, I would be the charity case, yeah. No, true, but he, at least he knows what he's uh, doing. <laughs> Come on, some fucking text. Hey, look, it works, see? There we go. Always helps when you can put the right stuff on. I mean, that's just skip something, but never mind. It's, uh, it does work, kind of. What? I mean, something sort of like a skip there, but we can fix that. But yeah, they are. Kind of works. This is telling us now to wait till 12.01, basically. Should I have a reverse of forward task? Interruptions worked. Let's 
double checks on that. So it's showing sit in the seat but at the same time, isn't it? She's sort of skipping for some odd reason. I know why. Lock until I'm not lock until voiceover completes. So I've got a voiceover. We're gonna lock this until the voiceover is completed. So that's that. Hopefully, reverse the forward though. Now we are in the back. It claimed. Let me just save that and actually just play what we've just updated there and see what it does. Uh, the dialogue was done with a silent wav. Basically, the same silent wav that I use in the JT stuff that were passed over just for this. And then, obviously, with the localized wav player and plugged it in. Yeah, I'll double check. I mean, they should both be in the off position by default, unless you state it to load up in that. Cause you can you can override stuff. I'm not getting into that tonight. That's a totally different. Uh, that that that's for another stream. <laughs> yeah, they're literally the ones that Adam Lucas sent me. Yeah, I'll send them to you. I'll ping them over to you. There's four different ones. Oh, bloody thing. So we've got so many things open here, it's taking forever to send things. Right, I'll just ping the road to you now. It's a little slow, by the way, when you're uh, doing different things. See, flip back on it. It's not showing the seat now, look. Bypass it again. Why is it done that? We'll fix one thing, but we still have one other issue. Uh, hang on, what's that one there? What have I got here? Right, I'll just double check myself on this thing because it doesn't seem to be playing. Try the seat. She's down as a seat. That one doesn't need locking. Apparently. Wait, I think it does though because it's after the voice. It's a little bit different to all the scenarios and some messes. Oh, 
we'll change it to the seat forward. Just see what it does. Probably won't do anything, but we'll uh, give it a go. It's just so much trial and error. I've sort of done two different weird things there. I've sort of based it. <laughs> the scenario I based this on was uh, an 08 scenario, but I'm using the bloody 47. I probably should have used an 08 really just to keep it simple, but I haven't got the 47 stuff at hand. But we'll probably, I'll have to go and do a little bit of digging and research. If I can't get this working in a second, we'll end up wrapping it up anyway. And we'll continue this on the next, uh, next do. The same round, we'll continue on, see if we can go any further with it. I will, this video is on YouTube. Not yet, but it is. Will be. It's all trial and error. Nothing, nothing uh, wrong with Peaks. The Peaks beast. I've done plenty of peat bashing with the uh, with that on the block full stuff. <laughs> it is good. It is, a, it is a good loco to be honest. We got plenty of chance to drive out on the block full route. Hmm. I agree. We always say this. <clears throat> What's he going to do now? Okay. for some stupid reason. Why is he bypassing? I don't have a clue why he's bypassing it, to be fair. It's really puzzling me, that. Oh, you got them pre top, bloody hell. Oh, nice. And hopefully it all goes well for you, Ryan. It's not obviously an easy game to get into anyway, but yeah, all the best for it. <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, puzzling. Check for specific out. Got it. Ooh. That's an old lucky manual, bloody hell. <laughs> I've tried applying for railways in the past and then never got anywhere without give up. I got further applying for the railways not working on the trams, and then when I apply for the railways while working on the trams, I got nowhere. Oh, I give up in the end anyway. Happy doing what I'm doing. Uh, right. Um, I'm probably going to leave it where we are, because I'll have to do some digging to find out what's going on here. Uh, I'll get it working. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll get it working and on the next stream. We'll, we'll hopefully press on and get it done. But I say it's taken us that long to get to where we are, so I'm going to uh, end the stream now. Because it's going to go on YouTube as well. So, no, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Cheers for everyone that's um, like, share, subscribe and gifted and all that as well. Oh, I'm gone. What have we got here? Uh, is that SCO one sitting see a typo? Uh, no.
No, they're all the same. Just double checking that. No, they're all the same. SCO1. Yeah. All, no, they're all the same. They're all good. No, thank you very much for watching, guys. I'm going to end it there. So, yeah, this will go on YouTube and you can watch back on this and at least it'll give you some inspiration in some form. We'll do, uh, I'll do the digging. I'll figure out what's going on and then we'll do another stream, continue with this and get it working fully. So, thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye for now.